You're on. Uh, good morning. It's Monday, April 2nd. This is Tuckton Road Border Selective Meeting. Uh, let us begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. First item is public input. Do we have any public input? All right. Seeing none, let's move on to review and approval of minutes. First is uh, Friday, March 9th. Any uh, additions or corrections? I'm also. I move to accept. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Uh, next set is uh, non public on March 13th. Okay, no issues. I move to accept. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. Uh, public on March 19th. I move to accept. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And finally, we have uh, not. Non public on March 19th. Yeah, I don't know how to do that. Probably send that over. I have nothing. Yeah, I move to accept. <coughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right. And uh, now we're on to appointments. Mr. Ledoux, are you ready a few minutes early? Yeah, I'll be right there. Take my coat off. <clears throat> Come on down. Good morning. Good morning. It's actually snowing outside, so at my house at least. It's April. <laughs> Uh, so I just, I wanted to, the reason I asked to talk to you was to bring to your attention something that I think probably you're just not aware of, which is not a criticism because I assume that you don't um, spend a lot of time watching YouTube videos yourself um, and certainly not the videos of the meetings since you're in the meetings, so why would you need to? Um, but, and it's, it's great that... Uh, that Karen is now uploading the videos, um, but there's a way to make it even better. Um, the, the problem is that she's posting the videos in multiple parts, and that's because when you uh, film a long meeting, the video gets broken up into 32 minute long parts. Uh, and that's not Joe's fault, that's just the way video cameras work, it's the way my camera works. So. Um, the problem is that it's not a good experience for the people who are watching the videos to have it broken into multiple parts because particularly on the day when Karen is uploading the videos, like you watch part one and then it takes like another hour to get part two and so that day and even sometimes um, if it's like a five part or six part video because if you guys had a really really long meeting it might even take two days um, for her to upload all the videos. So um, the other problem is if it's like a week later and you're watching the video uh, and you're watching part one and you get to the end of it and sometimes it's the middle of a sentence when it stops because it stops whenever it stops, um, you have to then go and find part two or three or whatever the next part is and that's not always totally easy because the video, um, there's the related section, related videos on the side of the page, 
the next video might be in there, but it might not be. So if it's if it is, you have to find it and click on it. If it's not, you have to go to the channel page and find it in the uploads. So it's just, it, it, in some ways it's very easy to do, in other ways it's a blockage towards watching the whole thing. Um, so it dissuades people from, um, they just say, ah, you know, I'm gonna watch the whole thing. So it, it's, it's a bad user experience. Um, but the other, and the other thing is that it takes up more of Karen's time because she up, she's uploading a video and then once it's done, she has to upload the next one. And, and as I said, sometimes it even takes two days. Um, not, not always, but. Um, and uh, so there's a very easy solution, which is she can merge the videos into one video. And um, this is this is what I do. I put up my videos, um, you know, in one part. So you can reduce the the four or five actions that she is taking: upload, upload, and upload, and turn it into two actions, which is combine the files into one and upload one file. So it's actually going to make it easier for Karen. It's actually better for Karen. It's better use of her time. Um, to combine files into one. Um, it's better for the, the person watching the video and, and it's better for Karen. And um, what I've been doing is I wait for Karen to upload all the videos. Then I download them to my computer, combine them, and upload them to my YouTube channel. My videos have been getting an average you know, depends on the subject, but 50 to 100 views is sort of typical. The Tuftonboro videos, the Karen uploads, it's more like 10 to 15, 20 views. So only to say that there are some more people out there that would be watching, could be watching the videos. And this would be a very simple step that would, would help in that regard, would make it better for the viewer and make it better for Karen. Um, and it's really easy and you can use existing software. I don't know what, um, I know you have Windows on computers, but um, I'm not sure which, you know, how new it is, but there's, Microsoft has uh, Movie Maker, which is one of their older video editing. Um, so you might have that. The newer one for Windows 10 is actually called Photos. Um, but it, despite its name, it, you can edit videos in it. Um, what I use is a program that I paid for, um, but it was $60, so it's not a big expense, and it's called Video Converter Pro, and it's available from wondershare.com. But there are many applications out there that could be used to combine multiple videos. Some of them would be full-blown like video editing, which would be way overkill for you know, just simply combining videos. Um, and so that's the, the YouTube portion of it, which would um, just be a simple step that would make it easier for everybody involved. Um, the, the next Thing I wanted to bring to your attention is the website and you might not know this but I what I my job is I work for a website I'm a developer for a website I work in WordPress which is the uh, an operating system for websites and tuftonboro.org the town website is run on Drupal and so Drupal and WordPress are like operating systems for websites same as Windows or Mac OS and what Drupal, which runs the town website, is that's a content management system, which is basically a blog. And so Drupal could could be configured, um, and not not by Karen, but I presume that there's a company that set it up for you, 
um, that can still do development type things for the website. But it could be set up to um, automatically post video posts. You can have a video section on the town website. And it can be set up to automatically sort of listen to the YouTube channel. And then it can, the site automatically can post the embedded video to the town website. And then it can also automatically share the link to the town website with the video uh, to Facebook uh, and also send out an email, you know, the same way when Karen posts a, an agenda or the minutes that there's an email that goes out to a mailing list. So this could all be set up that way and it would all happen totally automatic, automatically so it wouldn't, um, you know, wouldn't put a burden on, on Karen after it was set up, it would just be automatic. And um, so one of the reasons that I think that I get, you know, a little bit more um, of an audience for my videos is that once I upload them to YouTube, I put them on my website and then I share that link to Facebook and it just makes it more obvious to people that it's out there and they can watch it. So again, that, I mean, you can do it manually as well, you know, but it can also be set up through through Bow, through the website, to happen automatically. So, um, so once it was set up, it would just run. So all, all Karen would have to do is upload the one video to, uh, to YouTube, and that, that would be it. Um, so I wanted to suggest that that would be uh, you know, a possibility that you could pursue. Sounds like something we have to look into. Yeah. So, so what is, you know, I don't use the computer that much, but Joe films our meetings. Yeah, and Joe's and great. Put, I love Joe. I just want to make sure that. And then he puts them on public airways somewhere. Yeah. Or public access channels. And they're not in segments when they go there. So wouldn't the act from Joe to Karen be the combining to one feature as opposed to Karen having to do that? Uh, well, I don't, and I don't want to speak for Joe, and I don't want to criticize Joe, and I'm not criticizing Joe. Just Feel free, man. <laughs> <laughs> I have a couple words to say because I'm part of this discussion. Okay. Um, I don't know what Joe does for the TV, and that's... Well, that's where most of the people watch it. I mean, you may have a hundred people going to your YouTube. Well, I don't know how many people watch. But I'm sure local access. That, you know, yeah. all of the comments that I hear are from people watching the local access channel. Okay. Um, but maybe that's the crowd I hang with. I don't know. But I'm sure that there are probably an equal number to the people who are watching it on YouTube. I hope so. So, the fact that only ten people hit the town website to watch it doesn't surprise me. I mean, obviously you're doing a better job of presenting it than we are. But are the people getting the information? I guess that's fun. Um, but back to the Karen editing or, or putting this piece together, I think that's between Joe and Karen. And here's Joe. Can I say something? Sure. You may. Max. Um, on my YouTube, our YouTube, yeah, uh, it's posted in segments, half-hour segments, and I've seen a variation of people going to either one or the other or the other. Okay, they're not watching the whole thing. No, I, I got well, that. We had this discussion yeah. too. I asked you if you had a video counter on your, because I look at your site also. Okay, and do you have a video counter in reference to the stuff that you put up there? Well, YouTube keeps analytics, yeah. But, yeah, but on your website, yeah. if I go over and say, oh, look, 25 people, you know, look at your website. Okay. Yeah, I have analytics on that I can look at, see how many You people, can look at yeah, it. Yeah, I, you know, and I didn't see it, so you tell yeah. you got 50, fine. You want to add up the five segments that I have? Well, maybe I got 40, okay? 
I don't think it's an inconvenience when people turn on and say, oh, gee, I don't think I want to listen to Lloyd. Oh, look, there's Andy. He's got a gun and he's leaning over the table. And so all of a sudden everybody's, you know, got 14, 15 views on things. So they're picking and choosing what they want. Last but not least, I just want to say we are doing our job and you are doing your job. And it's, again, mostly appreciated. I get the choice. I can go to our website or we can go to your website and we're encompassing everything, okay? Trying to make it all one, it just gives people the options, okay? It's, and this is all my opinion, okay? I'm not knocking anything down, but as far as joining it, I think I told you before, I like the segments, okay? You like, you got a compression tool, you compress all the things. So if somebody goes and looks at yours, well, I gotta watch the whole thing to find out what's going on. Maybe people don't want it. Yeah. Okay, they lose the interest. <coughs> all right, I said my piece. Thank is you. Is there another step? I mean, I think what I'm reading from what you're saying, Max, is that it takes you, I don't know, four days to get a meeting all the way from the town to you, so that you can. Yeah, you, I don't know if it's four days, I, I but <laughs> pick a number. So it's very, very timely. Is this? Also like, not a criticism of Karen. I mean, you didn't like waiting for the next segment to arrive. And I don't, you know. Well, occasionally it will go into the next day. I can just hold off on publishing. I'll wait till they're all up, and then I'll hit publish. Or and I do playlists there, that have them to run continuously after. Okay. Is there a better way? Is there another option? If I mean, let's say Joe's happy with what he's doing, and Karen's happy with what she's doing, but you're a little not so happy about the timing. Is there another? It's, it's uh, all I'm saying is Joe's happy with having segments, yeah. and your solution here eliminates the segments. So, I, well, is there a middle ground? I mean, certainly people are not watching from start to finish. I certainly hope. But if there's, which is why when 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 I was coming in and taping, I was doing timestamps so people could jump around. Um, that's laborious, so not suggesting that, <laughs> although that would be cool. Um, people, if there's one video, you know, they can skip around. There's a, dra there's a, a track bar, there's, you know, you can skip around and you can see what's going on. Um, what, was, what was the question? How do we make your life easier for your website? I guess that's what I'm getting at. Assuming that Joe wants to keep it in segments and he's our video guy. Yeah. Is there some operation that Karen can do to make the download easier? Or should she wait a day until she has it all? I guess it's like you, <clears throat> you can also upload multiple videos at once. So you could put them all on the upload page at once. Um, I don't know. But, and you know, I'm not, not, it's not about making my life easier. <laughs> Here. I'm trying to just merely suggest a very simple way of getting the whole video up at once. Okay, well, I think we'll, we'll look at it yeah. and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and conduct a, a full conversation. Yeah. And it, I don't it, know. it affects Joe, it affects Karen, it affects right. and I, as well. And uh, I do want to reiterate it would make Karen's job easier because all she has to do is say there are four files, she selects all four files, she merely drags and drops them into the converter program, hits convert, it's done, she drags that one file, uploads it, that's, you know, like two actions as compared to four or five. So in my opinion, it would make her job easier. And on the website, is it, Karen, maybe you can answer this question. Is it Tom Arnold? Or? No, that would be on virtual Tom Hall. That, so it's there. a different, he's, he doesn't handle that part. Right. So we don't have a good in the house. Okay. But that. Yeah, and I don't, you know, that whole part, if it were my website in WordPress as opposed to Drupal, I could do that very easily. I'm not as familiar with Drupal, but I, I know it's possible. But, okay. you know, I don't know what the particulars are. Well, without getting into your job and hitting your income, if you could send an email 
just describing the process because we're just sort of talking about it. Sure. And I know you don't mind doing that. Do you have some so, notes that you could so that we could talk yes. informatively with our I'll write I'll write email here. Okay. You know, then we know what the questions to ask. When sure. We're talking to our provider. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know In saying? terms of the website stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just. Yeah. You're talking Chinese when you're talking to me about this stuff. So if you could just give Karen the questions to ask, I think that would make the process go a lot smoother. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, the, the other part is um, you might want to set up a Tufton Borough Facebook page. You know, the, I think the fire station and the library already have one. And the website would automatically share to the Facebook page. Okay. And that would help get information out there to people. So thank you very for your time. And I'm going to leave now. Thanks, man. You're not gonna stick around? No, I uh, he's gonna watch the video later. I'm gonna watch the video later. <laughs> In thirty-two minute segments, right? Yeah. Uh, are you able to all upload it and then you can combine them and watch them all at once? Yeah. Great. Nine AM is not so convenient for me anymore, but yeah, I will watch the video because when we do the uh, selections update, I'm gonna talk about it. Only in the um, we've got a situation brewing with Wolf Barrow. I would have um, liked to have talked to Bill prior to Friday's meeting. And I almost didn't pick up the phone. And then it dawned on me that I couldn't do that. And I just wanted to point that out as an instance where the overreach of the current legislation for these the meetings makes it really difficult mm -hmm. for us to, to plan to right. make, make things happen. So I, I just wanted to keep you fully informed of that. Okay. <laughs> so we met on Friday and got less done than I think we could have gotten done. Okay. And now we're going to meet with Wolfboro today. And it's, it gets protracted, and I think if we could have had a conversation on Thursday, it might have sped it up a bit. <coughs> All right, well. Okay, so I won't say that this is the right comments. Okay, well. You've heard it. I want to I wanna congratulate you on my good judgment. Your good judgment. Thank you. The reward. Okay. Thank right, you. Thanks, Max. Have a good day. Good day. Mr. Mr. Ford. Hi, Dave. <laughs> Welcome to downtown Tufton Borough. Yeah. How's everybody doing? How are you? Well, so, thank you for inviting uh, us here today. Um, I think uh, Select Linda is also Hi. here um, attending, but um, we had a uh, meeting, a uh, suckers meeting, in which we were talking about the RIV site and some issues. Ken came up, uh, Chip had come ask some good questions. So, um, I'd offer to come as we have done in the past to give me give you a project status. So, uh, if it's okay, I can start into that unless you want to start with the me and you uh, in charge. Of it. I, I'd, I'd say go ahead and uh, get our information updated. I'm sure we'll ask some questions as well. Okay, so, um, what I is. Instead of starting with the end, which is the necessity in the eminent domain, what I want to go is to go back and give a real brief history of um, where we are with the, uh, the project. So I wrote a memo, and, uh, and I also have a series of maps, which will help uh, as we're kind of talking about things. If you have a question, if you're orientated, uh, the one is a detailed color map showing the site. and. Um, So one of the same, as I said, and, and it's true, it, it, right from the beginning, I think the town of uh, Wolfboro has uh, always taken this uh, uh, issue very seriously, that uh, we have a responsibility uh, not only to the taxpayers of Wolfboro, but to the public in general, we take that very serious. Um, the issue uh, began back in 2005 when the state gave an administrative order uh, to um, uh, 
clean up our effluent disposal in which we were spraying it in the woods and we were getting runoff and it was uh, a violation of our groundwater permit. Uh, the town uh, moved uh, with uh, action in terms of hiring an engineer, right Pierce engineers, who did a detailed study. Uh, they recommend we buy a certain parcel of land, 35 acres. Uh, we did so, we rushed uh, under a very tight timeline from DES to design and build uh, the site. So we purchased a 35 acre site uh, from the Wooden Family Trust on a property line. And that's the map I'm showing you here, kind of shows you uh, the site and the, uh, the power line kind of bisects the site. Uh, to the right uh, is the, the town of Wolf Road. To the left, you can see the town line. And um, the site was permitted and constructed as a groundwater discharge uh, for the treated effluent of the town of Wolf Road's wastewater. Uh, we refer to it as a rapid infiltration basin site, RIDs. And the, uh, the highly treated effluent is pumped up to here. It goes through the ground. The sand is uh, about 50 to 60 feet of unsaturated sand where it gets further treated, where all the phosphorus is uh, removed. And then it uh, heads down the hill. You see the, the topo, uh, it, uh, we're at elevation uh, uh, 660 at the top. Um, then it starts heading down the hill and the problem occurs when you get about halfway down the slope towards the 19 mile brook. We have certain areas, we've highlighted them as the uh, central groundwater discharge zone. Uh, the, to the left we have the western groundwater discharge zone which is mostly in Tuftonboro and on the Whitten Family Trust property. And to the right, we have the Eastern Groundwater Discharge Zone. So in the original engineering and permitting and plans, the intent was the water was gonna go in the ground, seep through, get additional treatment, and then leap out through the wetlands and then into the brook, uh, out to Monty Mount Bay into Lake Um Unfortunately, um, once the, the project was started up uh, in um, the, uh, April and June of 2009, we experienced problems. Uh, we were seeing, it started initially in the central groundwater discharge zone, in which we had a um, breakout of groundwater in areas that weren't anticipated. Uh, we had uh, sinkholes, uh, certain areas where the groundwater was moving in excess of the capacity of the, the land, and it's weakened areas, so we had sinkholes, we had little uh, cracks in the soil, uh, we had and trees tipping over, and we had most important <coughs> erosion, soil movement, so that was pretty, pretty significant. Uh, right so, away. So the underground geology didn't get the memo. The, uh, unfortunately, and we don't want to get too much into uh, our consultant and the mistakes they made, uh, but they uh, they told us we had a, a million dollar site, uh, we, the gold mine, in fact, that was the words they told the selectmen, because they were blinded by the top of the hill mm -hmm. and, and didn't realize that when you transition from the really good soil, and it is, you know, nice soil for what we're trying to do, but as it transitions underneath this ledge, and then as you come down the slope, you start getting into wetland soils. And that's where um, we ran into problems, and that's where we, we probably should have done more testing. At a point in the early engineering permitting, when they saw it, things that uh, should have alerted us, they withheld that information. Uh, they went forward with the project and we purchased and built and not until uh, later on do we find out the mistakes that were made. But right away, the thing that's important to know is right away we notified New Hampshire DES. Um, we, we, we tried to reach out to all parties. I think we kept the, the town of Tuftonboro involved. It was a pre pre or previous administration that we met with selectmen and the Conservation Commission. And I think one of the things I said, I want to make sure we understood that this may be the most studied site in, in the state. I mean, there's, there's a lot of things we started going back to uh, 2010, in which we started issuing uh, yearly reports, which would uh, not only, uh, we looked at what was required by permit, but we went beyond that. Uh, the town of Tuftonboro, as you may recall, on their own, paid Normanville Associates $20,000 to do analysis of the stream uh, prior to us even starting up, so we had a baseline. At the same time, the town said, yeah, let's do a baseline. So we took a lot of uh, sample points along the brook. So we started doing surface water quality before. So we have a good baseline before we started. And then once we had the problems, we said, oh boy, we started to spend a lot of money. And that's what's in here, looking at the surface water, uh, groundwater. We, we, we put in groundwater wells, uh, monitoring wells and testing. 
And uh, so that went on. Uh, and, and again, I, I listed all the reports on the second page. Um, yeah, I have to. I mentioned at the meeting the other day that I was I didn't feel fully informed. Since then, I found all of the reports that you did. Send oh, okay, okay. And unfortunately, I've read them. So. Um, I and, and I don't want to. I mean, I, am I boring you now? We're going over the history. I got, of no, I'm, my fellow selectmen didn't start spend the time because I, I didn't think they needed to. They made their own choices. But every piece of um, paper you've you've uh, written, I've read. Okay. In my term as sort. So the reports are here and were shared, but to a certain extent, they just created more questions in my mind. Sure. So oh, no, and that, that's okay. And I just want to so uh, briefly, just so we, you know, to give you that history, and then we can go where we are today, and then we can again continue to ask questions. But if you want to go back to that, but we did issue these reports uh, through um, 2015. We also had an independent uh, uh, engineer, uh, Weston Sampson, who was a geotechnical engineer on site looking, uh, in addition to the other stuff, and they were looking at the salt failures to see if it was getting worse to see what, what the threats were there. So that, that went on for three years. Uh, we then, uh, uh, we still were working with uh, Wright Pierce engineers. We hired an independent uh, uh, geotechnical uh, and uh, hydrogeological engineer uh, to do a detailed study uh, of the report that was done in uh, 2011. Uh, then it became evident uh, between 11 and 12 that uh, the responsibility was with the engineer. There was design areas that they, they withheld information. Uh, so we were trying to get them to pay for the fix. They were looking at cheap fixes we didn't think were acceptable. Uh, so in the end, we ended up with a lawsuit, and, and without getting into the details of that, uh, it did take a couple of years. Uh, the DES at the time also indicated uh, that because we were being proactive, uh, we were taking steps to uh, mitigate the erosion, uh, we were monitoring, uh, we were doing everything that and, and what was asked of us, and so we think we had stabilized the site. Uh, so they backed off, not uh, pushing us uh, until we had resolved the issue with the engineer. Uh, that finally got resolved uh, in 2014. And, and what, was, what were the, just run through the facts of that failure? I mean, you, you prevailed in a lawsuit premised on what? That they uh, withheld information, uh, they were fraudulently uh, practicing. Uh, and but what, uh, what, I mean, no harm, no foul. If I don't tell you I'm carrying a gun, it's not your problem, but what was the information that, that they withheld? So uh, during the uh, analysis, they, they did a, a c computer model. Mm -hmm. And in the area here, there wasn't a lot of data, so they had to interpolate between wells. So what we know right now, we've uh, probably tripled the amount of uh, wells that have been there since the original. So uh, for instance, they had a well number eight, and they, they, this whole area was kind of, uh, they just interpolated. And then uh, the uh, hydro engineer uh, Smith, when talking to the modeler, said, you do what your models do to make it work. So they actually forced the model to give it positive data so that we would have no questions and get permitted for 600,000 gallons a day. When there was clear evidence that the model was indicating those problems and we should have stopped and we should have went back and... and so they changed the model to make the result what they wanted. But that didn't change the underlying soil. Correct. So you're looking for 600,000 gallons worth of disposal? We, we were at that time. So what are you looking for now? Right now, uh, due to, um, uh, because we also have issues with infiltration getting into our, our, our sewer system. Our sewer system goes back to the 40s, so we have a lot of I and I, they call it infiltration inflow. So we've been actively looking at that. So back when we, this permit was uh, being developed in, in 2005 and six, our peak flows were over 600,000 gallons a day on springtime, and our yearly flow, uh, we measure we up to 140 to 150 million gallons in a year that we had to get rid of. And we kind of look at uh, on a total because we had a storage pond of 90 million gallons that we use to store and then spray it because we spray normally uh, between May and October. So we kind of track it. Well now, with the efforts we've been doing with reducing the infiltration into our system and conservation measures, uh, the last two years, we're down to 100 million uh, gallons uh, per year. So we reduced it almost by 50% just by getting out the exit. So now, as a result, uh, with the studies we're doing here, we looked at the long-term growth. We're not looking at expanding our sewer into other areas. We're just going to have infill from where the sewer system is now. So we see that the future is not where we need 600,000 gallons a day. We feel we can, uh, uh, we have some growth but the growth is going to be uh, countered by the reduction in II flow. So 
So we're looking at around 300 to, to 350,000 gallons a day uh, for the long-term permitting. So almost 50% less than was originally permitted for the site. That being said, when we studied the site, the site in its natural conditions can't sustain that kind of flow under the original design because we still have that issue. It comes down the hill, it hits, you know, it's traveling at 60 miles an hour, it's doing great, and all of a sudden, boom, we hit a roadblock, now it's going at five miles an hour. The soil just slows it down, and there's just not enough area for the water to leap in so that it breaks out as it's going through the wetlands, it's doing the damage to the wetlands. So that's, all these studies and going on, went on to look at that. Then uh, once we got done the lawsuit, we sat down with the state and we uh, did an administrative order by consent. So now we sat down, we laid out a long-term program to say, okay, let's start again. Let's look at all options again. Let's look at abandoning the RID site and see what else we could do. So we looked at the potential of putting a pipe across the lake to Guilford and to the, uh, the state uh, wastewater facility in Franklin. That was always the original plan back in the cities. They called the River Winnesaki River Basin Project. They were going to sewer the whole lake, and ours was a you know a twenty-year temporary solution until the sewer came around. Uh, but when the economics of that program fell apart, where the feds were paying seventy-five percent, the state twenty percent, the town twenty-five percent, that's happened in the seventies. Well, that's long gone. Uh, so the only way for these projects or for the municipalities to carry that cost. Well, that cost is eighty million dollars uh, to go across the lake. Uh, we looked at going down through Alton because Alton has issues. They are all on septic systems on lake, so they have a lot of problems. And, and uh, uh, yet, because they don't have a centralized system, no one's going after them. But in fact, they have some serious problems there. So we looked at uh, whether we could tie. Well, that's going to cost more money to go down to Alton, pick up Alton, and bring them up, and they would have to pay their share. And then we reached out to the Wisconsin Basin uh, people, and they were like, "Hey, fine, you want to come in, but you're going to have to pay all that cost." and maintain all that infrastructure and pay to upgrade their system, right? Yeah. Right. yeah. So now the price was just uh, uh, crazy. And, and now we can make the case that we're protecting uh, the jewel of the state, not just the wood is is our you know, huge, huge cash cow for us. It's our golden egg, so we need to protect it. But there's nowhere at the state level. So we're still back <coughs> at a level trying to solve our problems. So we looked at other alternatives looked at other sites in which we might be able to do groundwater infiltration um, and uh, looked at reducing uh, by splitting up the, the facility different things but none of it makes sense. Uh, the, the next closest option would be to buy additional land along the power line which would be up and these are all private tracks it's all probably conservation trusts which is kind of how we like it uh, and we'd have to expand uh, we'd be looking at maybe 20 to 30 million dollars and it would require us uh, potentially trying to negotiate or take land by eminent domain, spreading out the system, make it more complicated. Uh, so we came back to the, down to this site and say, how can we fix this site? And uh, we wanted not to have a theoretical solution, we wanted a real solution. So when, we, when the engineers came up with ideas, let's test them out. And that's when we started doing the pilots. And then 2016, we did pilots one, two, and three to determine whether or not we could use the natural uh, soils to reintroduce the water, collect the water where it's breaking out, and then bring it back down to the brook. And, and uh, that field, even the natural soils down along the brook. Was that, a, was that when we came out and you did a little uh, show and tell? Okay, so you, yeah, you remember yeah. that one, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So that was the... the 2016. Yeah, 2016. Uh, 2017, we said that that failed. Now we want to create what we call an engineered natural solution. So we want to get the water back in the ground. So we're collecting it with the above ground piping. And that was a te temporary solution. So where we're breaking out, we put sandbags, directed the water into a pipe, into a flow chamber where we split it, measured it, put it back into the ground, into a uh, uh, about 100 feet away from the brook, a four foot diameter uh, beehive, kind of has holes in it, with 20 foot stone all the way around it. So we put the water in, the water then infiltrates into the stone. And then down about 10 foot deep, we have a, about a 10 foot wide, one foot thick uh, zone of stone, one inch stone that goes uh, below underneath the wetlands and come up into the brook. And we constructed that by using a uh, uh, sheet piling, uh, about 20 foot wide, through the wetlands into the brook. We had, we had all this permitted too, so we just went through as a pilot. Took all the wetland soils out, put the stone underneath, put the wetland soils back on, revegetated it and then have it, what we call a chimney up to the brook. And again, now if you've seen that, and that's what we'd like to show you more, that, that looks natural. We were able to put all the wetland soils back, so now uh, the structure, which is on the upland area, we have about 100 feet 
of the stone, uh, ground stone that's in there, and it comes up into the brook. And that went online in the summer of uh, 2017, and we ran it through the winter up until about February this year. Very successful, doing about 70 gallons a minute. So we convinced the state, and in, in our reports, and again, I kind of got off track on the reports, but the last report here, uh, which is December 22nd, 2017, as a result of that pilot, it proposes to build uh, four or five of those uh, EMSs to get the water back in the ground. Um, the other piece of the solution... Where is that pilot located on? Is it is it annotated on this uh, It is uh, it's, it's not, but if you go where it says, uh, in, in the center it says Wolf Sand Trap, and under that you see test pits 16.2, 16.01, and the test pit 16-8. So 16-8 is where that uh, uh, um, test, uh, pilot test number four is. Okay. And, it, and it, when you can see there's kind of some wetland, little wetland symbols. So where that test pit is up in the upland area is where we, we put the uh, four foot diameter of the structure and the stone around it and it went through the wetlands up into the brook up in that area there. And that's still being monitored. We have uh, gazometers and uh, uh, testing that we're still kind of keeping an eye on it. But now we've stopped the flow to it. so it's. What's happened now um, is the concern about how do we collect the water coming into the wetland. So, so the area to, uh, I kind of sidetrack, but the central and the, the western areas, those discharge zones are all have too much water. The, the slopes and the soils cannot handle the, the amount of water we're putting into them. So what we need to do now is go upstream of those, up slope, put in a trench, which would be nothing fancy, about a 10 foot deep stone with a perforated pipe in which we would collect the groundwater, but monitor it so that we don't dry out the wetlands. We want to still let the wetlands get their water, but to take out the excess capacity, pipe it around, and then put it back in the ground in the ENS systems that will be uh, constructed along the, uh, along the brook. So in 2018, we appropriated money to go ahead and permit and design Pilot 5 to prove that we can intercept it properly. And, and one thing about the pilot suits, well, the engineers are great. I used to be an engineer a long time ago. Before now, I, I just manage people in, in projects. But theory is one thing, but practical is, is really the key. You've got to make sure it works. And, and what we, we, we said is we want to prove it, make sure it works over a period of time. So the same thing with the groundwater intercept. The wild seems pretty simple, but we want to be able, and we can learn from it. So the intent this summer is uh, to go ahead and put the interceptor trench. We're going to be working on the central area and, and to monitor it and see how we can control it to, to achieve our goals. Any other place in New Hampshire done this? Or are you leading the pack? We are leading the pack uh, in more than one way. Uh, while there are many groundwater discharge permits in the state, and there are major ones, like in Conway has a very significant uh, discharge permit, bigger than ours, but they tie right into the Saco River and they don't have any wetland soil between their RIBs and the brook. Uh, Farmington also has RIBs in the same similar situation that are on the uh, uh, Kachiko. They, they have uh, a RIBs, right, no wetland soils between them and the brook. So they don't have those issues. So we have the unique issues of having a significant discharge with the wetland soils between our RABs and the, uh, in the, in the brook. So that way it puts us in kind of a it unique situation. New science. It's not new science, because it's all old science, but it's making sure we apply it practically and, and make sure we do it, you know, that it works and it's sustainable. So that's one of the reasons we're being a little more cautious. And the other thing is, because the state is kind of like a partner, like I think Tuftenberg has been a partner when I was talking to the, 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 the Conservation Commission. We've kind of, kind of worked pretty closely with the Conservation Commission and uh, we've taken input. And again, uh, this is a, a, a long-term problem that we have to solve. I'm gonna be here for a long period of time. And, and again, it's, it's uh, uh, we're trying to be careful with it. So our goal again is 18 to prove the groundwater interceptor trench will work. And then we'll finalize the engineering and permitting. And in 2019, we'll be looking at uh, uh, doing the final construction and finish in 2020. So have you permitted for this? Are you going through the permit process? Yes, we have. Every so year. Do we have a copy of the permit for Tuftenberg? Uh, we haven't dug any. any uh, the only per permit we had there was for the sand trap, which was done in the 2010. So the all the permitting we're doing in the pilot is all in the, in the top of Wolfboro side so far. So what's, uh, we were hoping. You've got a breakout session, section here. Correct. So the impact isn't just in, in Wolfboro. And I think 
I, and I may be wrong, but I, I think that your permit is, is uh, insufficient in that your impact area, you should be talking to the Army Corps of Engineers as well. I, re I remember looking at your original permit, and the acreage limit seemed to come just underneath the requirement for the Army Corps of Engineers. So I'd be interested to see how that plays out. I also think what you're looking at is not just the six acres that you've outlined here, but it would appear that the topography of the Tuftonboro side means, and I looked at the reports, and it appears as though the Tuftonboro soils are a lot better for your project than the Wolfboro soils are. So it, my assumption is that you're moving north into Tuftonboro with a significant portion of your project. And I have to ask the question, am I, you know, does Tuftonboro need a major septic system? No. We're not under any orders to create a septic disposal system that's, you know, municipal size. I don't know you. why we should get involved at all. I, I just don't. You, you happen to snuggle up against the Tuftonboro border initially. We well, have every right to use the property in Wolfboro the way you see fit. Now you want to come into Tuftonboro with your project. And I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to justify that to the citizens of Tuftonboro and to myself. You're already impacting 19 Mile Brook. You're putting, even if it's 300,000 gallons of water or effluent. Correct. And that's a significant impact. I mean, that's right, well, a one-inch rain event every month. Okay. You, you, you went on and asked three questions and jumped around. First, you talked about the Army Corps of Engineers. And that's getting back to the reporting, so uh, I can answer that, or do you want to get run into the necessity? Which you is can really do whatever you want. I asked you some questions, just to answer whatever you want. Okay, so with regards to Army Corps of Engineers, you're correct that there is a cutoff when you get to about a, a, a certain amount of wetlands disturbance, then the Army Corps kicks in. Army Corps kick will kick in ultimately still to get the review. Uh, but again, the question comes into what does the Army Corps going to do for us that uh, because it's such a unique situation, and that we've taken responsibility for it and we're working closely with New Hampshire DES, the Groundwater Bureau, the Wetlands Bureau, the Wastewater Bureau, and the Surface Water. So we've met with them and doing everything. And we're more than happy to bring Army Corps in if we... Uh, you, get one, you get another level of engineering. You get national scope of engineering. You get a different person as opposed to the same person who designed this or approved the sure. system for sure. DES right. is currently working on it now. Right, yeah. And if you believe that, yeah, the feds are here to, help, they're here to help you. Yeah, they're, right. they're going to definitely help you. Yeah. Well, that's, they're going to be here regardless because okay. it is permitting, but I don't think they're going to bring any expertise that we haven't brought to the table already. But we, again, uh, we've got to follow all the rules and regulations, so we'll do that. So with the Army Corps, they will be involved mm -hmm. and it's for, in terms of the restoration of the wetlands. So let's move on to the question, which is the end which, which is more important, is the necessity. Um, the town of Wolfboro is the uh, kind of regional center. We have the high school, we have uh, the hospital, we have Brewster Academy, we have over 20 or 30 restaurants, we have churches and clubs, and because of that, we have a, and the reason we have that density is because we have a wastewater collection system and a water uh, distribution system. Uh, the water system has been in since 1890s, the sewer collection and treatment system has been since the 1940s. As a result of that, that is a public necessity. We have to find a solution that's good not only for the town of Wolfboro, but it's good for all of the state of New Hampshire, which is why we're regulated by the rules. When we look at the effluent disposal, the state put a state law in back in 1930s that said you can't discharge raw wastewater to Lake Lipsaki. Good law. But at that time, we had politicians say, well, exclude Smith River and Back Bay. What? So we, we got a couple of years, and then in 1940s, wait a second, Smith River is part of Lake Lipsaki. You can't put raw wastewater in there. And they sued the town. The town still didn't want to do anything. They finally sued us, and they'd actually designed the drawings and finally helped fund it. So in the 40s, we finally put in the sewer system, so we stopped discharging uh, raw wastewater. Come in the 70s, we came up with the Clean Water Act. And we said, okay, everyone now has to treat no more discharge in the whole country. So we have the Clean Water Act, and that's when the money came in. So we had built this beautiful plant in the 40s, ran it into the ground. So by the 60s now, we're not doing very good treatment. We build a whole new treatment facility, again, 95% funded by the states and, and the feds, and, uh, and then come into uh, the 70s and then come to the 90s, 20 years later, ran the plant into the ground again. So we were now looking at administrative order in, in the early 90s, 
Um, and at the same time now, the spraying was going on from the 70s to the 90s without a lot of oversight. And we then turned ourselves in in the 90s and said, hey, look, we got a problem here. Even though it, the engineers declared victory and won a big award back in the 70s, but by the 90s, we had issues and we, we started to study them and, and, to, uh, and that resulted in the administrative order which saying, you better do something. The spray is running off and that's when we started with the uh, looking at all the solutions. When we looked at all the solutions, we found this site, which again was excellent site for getting that tertiary treatment. You remember, at the plant, we can get rid of a lot of the BOD, suspended solids, and nitrogen, but the phosphorus is the key element that we're worried about getting into the lakes. And phosphorus does attach to sand, so in the sand treatment, it's a very effective way of getting rid of the phosphorus. So when we looked at that, we came up with this plan, and again, even though it was flawed because of the capacity, because of the wetland soils, it, we invested $7 million up here. And now going forward, we're still looking at what is the best solution. By far, this is still our best solution. Now why does Tough Number have to get involved? Well, we, again, proposed it. We had our meetings and, and uh, hearings uh, back in 2006 and seven, and when it got approved, it was always shown as the water goes in the ground in Wolfboro, and it's going to come out, most of it's coming out through here. And then as you say, the topography is very unique here, so that we have these, as the Esker uh, was developed the last ice age, we're seeing most of the groundwater is following and relieving itself within this area right here. This is why we're saying, in terms of the taking, we want to have that area. It's not going any further. We're going to do some continue, uh, more testing down here. In fact, I met with Mark Meehan and agreed to uh, test his well to, to assure him that nothing is getting beyond this point, that the, the geology and the uh, groundwater is all going in that direction. So we feel it is contained here, so the town of Tuftonboro doesn't have to do anything, but it's a necessity because it's for the public benefit that we need to do this and correct this and make sure we have the long-term solution that will sustain us for 20 to 50 years going forward. Well, it's, a, it's for the public benefit of Wolfboro, and if you want to include that as the regional hub, do you, ever go, do you ever have breakfast? Do you ever eat over that's in Wolfboro? Do you ever go to hospital? That's immaterial. Sure, no, it is. It's not. It's, it's very important. absolutely immaterial. So you think that we, you talk about... It is about absolutely it. immaterial to this situation because you're saying that just because we have breakfast in Wolfboro, we should accommodate their septic. What I'm saying is that you've got enough property within the confines of Wolfboro and even if you look at your $80 million pipe to Franklin, yes. if that were an option, sure. that's not totally out of the realm of possibilities if you look at 20 or 30 year bonds. I just don't know why we're put in a situation where because I have breakfast in Wolfboro, I have to take your septic system. Because we as a community, why we put together lines to say, here's Tuffenberg, here's Wolfboro, here's Osby, right. here's Alton. The fact is we're all connected by water. Lake Winnipesaukee is a watershed. It includes multiple towns. It includes almost a whole region. If, if you could possibly contain this system yes. within the, the confines of Wolfboro, yes. we're still accommodating your effluent. It's not going into Wolfboro. It's going through 19 Mile Brook into 19 Mile Bay. Absolutely. 100%. So we're already accommodating that. There's nothing right. we can do about that. Right. Indeed. What I'm saying is that there's no. I have no assurances from you or anybody else that this is going to be the limit of your taking in Tuftonboro, that this is going to be the, that you're not going to crank this up to 600,000 gallons at some point in time, that you're actually going to include us into the permitting process, that you've gone through a permitting process that's transparent, that you've actually done the... So you're calling me a liar. So no, you're saying all this is false, that we have a little due diligence, did your, did did you, speaking for the time did, you, did your system fail? Yes, it did. I told did you it fail? fail? Absolutely fail. Okay, and you're saying you're absolutely bulletproof guaranteed it's never going to fail again. I just went through and they said we spent much more time, right. more engineering, and as, as an engineer can do, I can assure you that what we're putting in now is going to be sustainable and a long-term solution. And a long-term <coughs> solution is what <coughs> I'm not sure. I thought I explained it, but I'll do it again. We're going to collect the water. That's no, going no, to I understand what the process is. Are you sell, t telling me this is going to be good for 10 years, 25 years, 30 years, 50 years? What is your expectation? My expectation is a minimum 20 and possibly to 50 years. That's what I said already three times today. So, you, you know, that's okay. It's a long term. So 20 years ago was 1998. I can certainly remember that. I'm sure you can. What are you going to do at the end of 20 years? What's your long term solution for your septic system? 
to be up here for at least 50 years. What is your long-term solution? You, you're not going to continue to have no hookups in Wolfboro. I just explained that our uh, capacity mm -hmm. is going to be capped at the permit limit, which is going to be around 350000 We're keeping in reserve 200 acres in Wolfboro, where we have our spray area, but we do anticipate decommissioning that, but keeping that in reserve. This site should be able to withstand us for 20 to 50 years. We're not expanding the sewer system. We're only having fill-in. So while we see our wastewater flows going down by 50,000 gallons a day, we see the potential over 20 years of increasing with connections to 50,000. So we see that being a neutral. So we're not going to have any additional capacity. We see this site being our 20 to 50 year solution. The one other thing is, didn't you shut down uh, <coughs> RIP one, the small one that's closer to their side? We did. Yeah, that, that's kind of a smaller detail, uh, but that's. Um, I guess I, I'm still somewhat confused as to uh, the selectman's concerns here. That again, we always was concerned. Obviously, if we fail once, you could fail again. True, but which is why we're being uh, much more cautious while we're getting. Uh, more than one opinion. We've had uh, multiple. We're spending quite a bit of money on consultants and making sure uh, that we're not going to repeat the mistakes that were made last time. And, uh, and again, we're, we're doing our best. Uh, and again, I, that's all I can tell you is where we're at with it. Um, the uh, there's nothing you say expanding. We're not expanding. All we're doing is uh, we've already we've expanded. You've already expanded. Because your permit does not include Tufton Borough. It certainly does. It does currently. It didn't originally. The ground, this is the, the maps we shown. Originally, the water's going to go in the ground here, come out in Tufton Borough. It was always yeah, shown It's, it's going to come through the 19 Mile Brook. Absolutely right. No, it came across well, into the Wind Trust, into the Western Zone. It was always shown this way. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure what you're saying. Uh, then, then your permit's imperfect in, in, in the acreage alone. But if So you're saying you've already invaded Tufton Borough to the extent of this breakout right here. So in deference to your failed system, we should just fall off this project completely and say, fine, go ahead, whatever you need to do. And our mandate as selectmen is not to be, you know, obdurate about these things, but we have to protect the sovereign borders of Tufton Borough. I mean, what sort of permitting are you going to go through with us? What sort of bonding are you going to present to us to say that our public beach at 19 Mile Bay is never going to be polluted? That you're going to do significant testings on the whole brook? That you're going to do yearly or quarterly testings of the, amount, the volume of water in that brook? What, what sort of effort are you going to make for Tuxton Barrel? I don't think I'm going to make any effort with you convincing you of anything because you've got your mind set up. And again, for the last uh, eight years, I've been working very closely with other people in Tufton Borough. Any input I receive, we will do whatever increased testing we can do, we can do. But the reality is your beach is getting polluted right now by uh, septic systems, uh, by the camp leach uh, lagoons, by people in boats. We're always under threat by everything. So you got to understand that. You've got approved uh, standing gravel pit up here. That, that whole Whitman Trust is approved for standing gravel pit. Mm -hmm. We're looking at a six acre parcel to take, to restore back to as close as possible to the way it was originally. To, and then to make sure it stays that way for the next 20, 50 years. Which is why we're, and we've been in discussions with the, uh, the trust for many years. They knew about it. We offered a lease or a purchase. They wanted the purchase. And uh, the reason we went into the domain is because they were trying to get more than we think is uh, more than fair. Uh, we don't want to do eminent domain. Our goal is to still reach it, and we're still hopefully that we we'll negotiate a settlement. But the reality is, we're not expanding. This is always the way it was originally permitted. All we're doing is restoring the wetlands that were damaged, and to put in the intercepted trenches, uh, upgrade of that, and to put it back in the ground where it belongs and where it was originally permitted. If your injections, well, let's let's move the topography. Let's put this hill over here. It still has the effluent going into 92 Mount Brook. Yes. You still won that battle because I wasn't here, maybe. But you snuggled it right up against the border. You created the problem. We didn't. So now you're in, we're in a situation where you want to expand this facility into Tufton Borough. Uh, you keep saying expanding, but not expanding anything. This is the original of It's not. Then don't buy it. Which you haven't Leave your permit alone. Don't buy it. 
That's absurd. We have a responsibility. The state is going to make us fix that. Yeah, they're going to make you fix it. Right. So how are you going to fix it? We, we, we've got the plan together. We've got the permits. We, we're doing the pilot. You have the one way of fixing it in your mind. You're being as, as stonewall as I am. You're saying the only way to go forward is to expand into Tuftamara. And I'm saying the only way you can go forward is to not expand into Tuftamara. Okay. Well, then we're going to have to agree to disagree. And again, if he speaks for the board, and I, he's doing all the talking, do you all agree with him? Is this, is this a, uh, uh, a unanimous decision that you guys want to fight us on this? We're, we're gathering information. Mm -hmm. Chip has a lot of questions. Uh, the, our board has not made any decisions at this point. But certainly our responsibility is to protect uh, the town of Uh And, you know, we want to be a good neighbor. No question about it. Uh, I think we've always had a good relationship between this town and, Tuff and, and Wolfboro. And we want to continue that. Um, but uh, a after the breakout in, uh, uh, in, in the initial RIB and, and some of what's gone on, you've done some great work in terms of trying to figure out how to, how to deal with it going forward. Um, it sounds to me like the work that you're doing uh, to um, figure out a way to recapture this stuff and get it back into the ground uh, uh, is probably on the right track. But ultimately, if, if we look down the road, um, with the way the effluent or the water coming out of the RAB flows, it does end up in Tufton Pearl. How, 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 what safeguards do we need to put in place and, and how do we do that so that uh, in the future, uh, if there becomes a problem, that, uh, that it's adequately addressed? Well, I need to know, it's, we're going to work together the way it happened in the last eight years in which I take uh, input from the Conservation Commission. Any additional testing you would like to see, if, any, if we're not doing enough, if there's something else we could do to further uh, provide confidence that we are being good stewards and that we are watching. Uh, but if you're saying is that you're going to fight us and that you're going to try to stop this and try to make us spend $80 million to go somewhere else, because the only other solution, like you said, is to take this, pick it up and go somewhere else. Well, we've looked everywhere else. This is the only site that, that uh, has this capacity. We already have quite a bit of money invested in it. Uh, so, so the idea that uh, we can just pick this up and move it somewhere else is almost, you know, it's just crazy. But if that's the position you're going to have, then that puts us into a, an well, unfortunate situation. You created the problem, but beyond that, you want to work together, you want to be collegial about this. Why is it that I have to read in the Granite State News that you're going to have a public hearing for an eminent domain taking in Tuftenberg. How is that collegial? I believe the town manager called here. So town manager called. Right. Give you heads okay. up. Right. Heads up. No, I don't need to talk to a town manager. I need to talk to a selectman. I didn't get a call from a selectman. Well, you know, I think you protocol. have a different form of government. And well, we both have the same. No, we government. have a five-man board, and we have a town manager. You have a town administrator, and uh -huh. the, the uh, town manager. Okay. met with the board and that's why it came. But I think what really is happening here is Wolfgang wants to take care of the issue that's on the Tufton Borough side. That's what this is all about. There's a breakout, we've come to a solution, um, and we have met with you, we brought you on walkouts. I was with you on that walkout. I've been with the Conservation Commission when they've gone on walkouts. We're trying to take care of the land. This was a solution, it was permitted, we felt we had it, our quality of our affluent is very high um, before it even gets to this site. Um, we won an award, was it last year, David, for our plant? Yep, to you know, so we're trying to be real good neighbors. We're trying to address our needs, and we are a center. We have your kids up at the middle school and the high school. We have to deal with their affluent. We do have a system. We're trying to take good care of that and take care of the lake. I'm with Bill on the milfoil joint board. I don't want any more pollutants to have to deal with milfoil or anything else, and we have been able to work together. <coughs> and I'm sorry you weren't with us from the beginning, because we have kept you up, everybody else up to date, and if we fail to keep you as up to date as you wanted, then I'm sorry about that. But I think what's here 
and the reason we won it. And the Witten Trust sold us that land. And everybody knew what was going in, and I agree with David. That was always part, that going that uh, Western Discharge was always part of what we were talking about. And I've been here from the start, so. I'm, yeah, no, I appreciate that. And I certainly take the head for not doing a little more due diligence before I came to the meeting. But that said, I'll reread the permitting. And shame on the selectmen who were here prior. If Tufton Borough property was included in that permit, then Tufton Borough should have been involved in it, physically involved in it. And so we're, we're stuck with what you have, obviously, but you're stuck more than we're stuck. You, you need to have this. If you don't get this part, I don't see that your system's going to work. I really don't. I mean, I've read this stuff. I don't what think do you mean not, it's not going to work? I mean, if you don't, if you can't acquire this property. Why do you think we can't acquire the property? I don't think you're going to acquire the property because you haven't gone through the Board of Land Appeals yet. We haven't gone to court over whether or not you could take it by eminent domain, whether you really have a purpose. There's any number of reasons why you can't take property in another town. You haven't got a legislative approval for changing your boundaries. We're not asking you to change boundaries. So you're not going to change your boundaries. Thank you. But at any rate, let's assume for a moment you don't get that piece of property. Then what happens to this? It's not an option. We have to fix the if problem. This, if, if you, if you don't get this, yes. what happens to this? That's not an option. Again, we have to fix the problem. So we're going to get it one way or another, whether it's a lease, a purchase, or eminent domain, we're going to get it, we're going to fix the problem. The other option is, okay, we tell everyone, shut off the water, everyone move out of Wolfbrook. We'll close the town down. Is that what you want us to do? We have no way to put the air phone. I don't understand your question. You're almost like, this is a done deal. Yes, we're here. We're not going anywhere. We have responsibility to fix the problem. So this is your only option? The $80 million option, or again, uh, 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 not, it's not feasible. We, we, again, we're not going to be, again, it's a it's huge amount of money. We don't have that kind of money. We have a thousand customers in the sewer system. As it is now, the town, the taxpayers pay for all these sewer improvements. We're already paying a bond and um, over $7 million for this project. And uh, now, luckily, we won the lawsuit and we're using the proceeds from the lawsuit to do this correction and all the engineering and to try to show that we do have a sustainable long-term solution that's gonna be acceptable to the state and the feds. Uh, and again, it's not an expansion. It's, again, just repairing uh, the surface that was damaged by the uh, mm -hmm. excess uh, groundwater breakouts. Mm -hmm. And it's the same project, and again, it was always, it's been, and, and it went through again at that time. So, Tufton Road did take an active part mm -hmm. in the review process. So, there were hearings, uh, Tufton Road appropriated money, they did a study, uh, they were involved, the state uh, found a finding of no significant impact for the project if it would have worked as designed. And uh, what we're trying to do now is to make it work as originally designed with, with the flaws, and uh, we think we figured out the problems and how to correct it. And I sat at a table with the uh, Tufton Borough Selectmen and Wolf Borough Selectmen, and I think the Tufton Borough Conservation Commission down at mm -hmm. the community center, and we had a large discussion about this project all the way through. Um, we also, when this came up, we had the spray fields. We cut spray fields off that was going into um, really? Bear Lake. You know, and that's mm -hmm. why I was pointing out we shut down number one because it really wasn't, you know, working well. We, we've tried to be that good neighbor, and when we've heard the concerns of Tufton Borough, we've invited you to a table and met with us as we looked at trying to find the solution all the way through. I was there, <clears throat> I was elected in 2005 when the administrative order got put on the town, and I have been working with <clears throat> the town administrator, and town manager, and Dave Ford to, to solve this. I was there for the lawsuit, you know. It was not what we wanted to go through. Um, and we thought we had a solution. We didn't know that they were hiding things on us, and we didn't know that they knew that this thing wasn't going to work. You know, and we won that's why we won. And now we're trying to be responsible to fix the bre what happened there with a solution that'll work. And our affluent is excellent. We're not in there polluting with people here wastewater, and they think we're just uh, dumping raw sewage in there. We're not going through a lot of process and before it even hits that book. I know we have a couple of members of our Conservation Commission here in the room today. Um, and you've had some conversations with them 
about some different kinds of testing on on, on the effluent. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Steve, do you have a question or a comment? Or Larry? I, I have to start with saying I'm disappointed. I think when two communities have a problem, you start by seeing what you can work out. Uh, maybe this is a time to play hardball. I don't think you start with that. You start with trying to find a solution that both parties can be happy with. And, you know, uh, Dave's kept us informed all the way. We haven't always been happy with it, but we've, we've known what was going on. And then I'm going to let Larry say something about what one of, one of our most recent objectives of what we're trying to accomplish out there. Um, when I joined the Conservation Commission uh, three years ago, uh, my background uh, was working with the state of Massachusetts in water pollution, wetlands, um, and uh, a number of other projects. And when I learned of this project, the thing that caught my eye right, right away is how close it was to the border of Tuckman Barber. And the fact that the aquifer, for all intents and purposes, is in, in Tuckman Barber. So that becomes, whatever problems there are, become Tuckman Barber's problem. Um, we felt that we could work with the town of Wolf Barber, and we have. The issues that I experienced um, uh, with Massachusetts and with some of these systems are the regulatory requirements and the science. The permit that uh, currently um, addresses this site, it meets those requirements. The primary issue is they cannot have a breakout, a discharge directly into the surface water. So their efforts are to get this into the groundwater and have it come up, as, as, as Dave mentioned, uh, percolate up into the, the bottom of the stream. So there is no direct discharge. The permit requirements are primarily based on standards that they can make. And they have made, and uh, well, the primary issue is, is Dave's uh, described as phosphorus because that is the limiting nutrient for uh, fresh water and that that really uh, accelerates the uh, algae growth and, and problems no foil etc. When I looked at the issue the issue is, is for per things unfortunately that are not, again this is where the science comes in new pollutants Issues that are on the horizon that Massachusetts, virtually every state in the country, has to deal with. But their, their, their level of complexity in terms of their analysis and so forth, so forth, have not reached, in a lot of cases, the stage where they now can be a specific permit item. For example, uh, we have the PFOS issue with the uh, flame retardants. That is new, relatively new on the horizon. The state of New Hampshire is taking uh, direct action with that. What I was concerned about are things that have come under, it's called the emerging contaminants of concern. Those, cons those are primarily pharmaceuticals, disinfectants, um, a number of those things. And there's a whole host of them. There's plenty of evidence that, that these are contaminants of significant concern but they're not identified specifically by the state or necessarily even EPA that you have to have this limit. So we, looking at this and realizing those things, we began to talk with Wolf Roar about those concerns. And Dave, very much to his credit, said, uh, I agree. And we began to craft an idea about how we could do this. And one of those things was to actually have a study done and we, and Dave, had any new contacts in um, 
uh, University of New Hampshire, possibly Plymouth State, to begin to look at some of these issues. I did a fair amount of uh, online research with this. Out of the blue, looking at one of the papers that was addressed, USGS was one, of, and I wanted to talk to one of the, the principal investigators of that to get a sense of what they did and how they did and whether or not we could do the study. USGS, uh, uh, Professor Joe Ayotte, Dr. Ayotte, said uh, we could do that. I was stunned. We had a meeting here um, with Dave Mitch Walker, who was the permit uh, well, writer for the groundwater, groundwater Bureau, the groundwater, the engineers. and we talked about some things. USGS said we can do a study, and we will do a study for those things. The concern again to me is 15 years down the road when we decide to find out that uh, this particular pharmaceutical is wreaking havoc either with the biota or, God forbid, public health. You have a baseline of what those things are in there as best you can do it with the current standards. And you can then back off on the other end, on the, on the Wolfboro side, and say, okay, uh, we, we're going to ban these, these things from discharge into the septic, into the, the system. They affect um, groundwater from septic systems. They're, they're all there. They, the issue, though, is with, to me, is with Tuckerboro. And we have a potential solution. The issue is, to me, is getting that funded. Um, Joe estimated um, the, the study would uh, be $175,000. I don't know the particulars uh, of Wolfboro's uh, financial situation. I do know they had a settlement. And to me, and, and again, that's Wolfboro's business where they get the money. But Dave and I kind of skirted around the issue where that money could might be able to come from. It, it still is a grant. So remember, they, they were going to grant seventy five thousand, and we were going to come up with a hundred thousand. So we okay. were working on, on on trying to fund that study with it. So within our so so it's down a hundred. So it's down down seventy five thousand. And I we talked to Joe. Joe uh, talked to Dave. I guess last week, yeah. and I actually saw Joe um, um, at a conference that I attended. It's possible. Does it solve all the issues? No, but it, to me, it gives um, both Wolfboro and Tuffenboro a sense of what these potential pollutants are, because they're already addressing the phosphorus and all the things that are on the permit requirement. But a, it gives them a sense of what to look for down the road. Um, one of the issues, one of the other, is that enough? I could talk about this for a long when, time. When was the meeting with that fellow? I'm sorry? When did you meet with the US? Uh, last fall. Oh, last fall. Mm -hmm. and, and they came in with a proposal. And it got into, well, D Dave was, had all kinds of projects. Uh, we kind of let it sit for a while. Dave said, I think he was at that time, and I, again, I don't well, know. Well, you say we'd be, you know, because we work on the funding, like, you know, so this year's funding, we, we appropriated 500000 of that. There were certain monies that we thought was, was suitable for the, uh, negotiated settlement with the trust about the land, and then we're hoping that some of this money would be able to go to the study. Uh, the Witten Trust is fighting very hard to get every penny they can out of us, and, and we thought they were going too far. Uh, clearly, uh, eminent domain is a very serious uh, legal action. It is allowed by state law. Uh, our attorney has told us if we can take this. This is a necessity that we have here because of the public benefit, and that we can cross town lines, that it's not uh, uh, it impossible so but based on our journey we don't want to do it we hope that we can uh, uh, agree to a, uh, a purchase sale but um, if without them in domain they could say well give us ten million dollars you need it you got to have it so why wouldn't they call this up for as much as they possible and again if we were Walmart and we needed that land for a driveway well that's that's the way it goes but we are not Walmart we, we are a government entity that has this right for eminent domain which we don't want to use it but we're using it as leverage now to hopefully bring them to the table because if they were to go in the domain, most of this land, one of the sheets I showed you, is, is uh, it's wetlands, it's steep slopes, and it's not developed. So the land is not worth a whole heck of a lot, although they, they are fighting hard to, to get every penny they can, and I don't blame them for it. 
but we have to fight back too because we still have to answer to our taxpayers. And, and while we want to be more than fair, we, we can't be uh, held up uh, here. And that's that's why the eminent domain is going on. And until we get that issue resolved, and uh, hopefully it will get resolved, uh, we can't commit to the study. Really? I no, mean, I'm, I'm lying to you. I'm here, no, I'm not. No, not, I'm not saying no. no. Says BS. Okay, then. Why do you have to I'm say gonna, that? I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm sticking here. I'm time. gonna. I'm gonna present as being in in total interest of my citizens. That's it. I'm only worried about Tupper. I asked you really because you're currently affecting, or were currently affecting, if you're not injecting now, the 19 Mile Bay watershed. So why wouldn't you have? taken that grant and the study, put it together, it's, you're going to need it. No, we don't, don't, don't need it. We don't have to do any of it. In fact, all we're trying to do is being good guys because they brought it up. Because I was so talking to you eight years. You we do not have to do that. It's not required. Not required by DES or whatever. But it's, it, you don't see it as a requirement of our collegial negotiations. Well, I think I'm not sure we're having any. It sounds like you're trying to make me look like the bad guy. Wolf Bros all bad. The top I'm trying to is... find something good that you've done. Well, I think you have to realize we did do a Warren article, but we have money, we have land, and all sorts of things right. in there. And you know you have to go to the taxpayers. So it depends upon what money we have left after we get the what is so appropriate. So all of your settlement went into the general fund or and un does no, it's it's house. it's in a separate CD and it's going to go for the solution to right. the problem, so the taxpayer doesn't have to pay on top of the seven million dollar so bond. So the study we, wouldn't be inclusive included in that solution. It we haven't gotten to there. We're still working in I and I. Dave is talking to your conservation commission. We have X amount that we appropriated. We're still negotiating the land. What we have left out of there will affect whether we can do it right now. You know, I, I knew he was talking about it, but I, didn't ha I don't have a figure. When I saw that, we knew that the big variable was that land. What? My mother always said that listen and silence are spelled with the same letters. I say that to at least bring a smile on this discussion. I've been on the Conservation Commission, I've been a selectman. Uh, first of all, this area is not Three Mile Island, so I want to make sure people understand that. It's costly for everyone. I think we need to be balanced in our passion and our problem solving. And I've experienced in the last few years that we have that. I've taken every walk, I've read every piece of paper. I'm for clean air, I'm for clear water no matter where I go in Tufton Borough or throughout New Hampshire. I've told you more than once, I trust but verify. Uh, I think we need to uh, take a time out here. I will say, Dave, I worked with you on a number of projects in this town and in, in this area. And I've always enjoyed your passion, your honesty, and your approach. Please don't stop. I think we should end this conversation for today. Frank, can I ask a question? Uh, okay. The difference I want to understand is between the spray irrigation field that you were shut off by the state and the condition of the water that. Uh, is at the RIP. What's the difference in uh, contaminants? So when uh, all the uh, wastewater is collected, goes through a treatment system, and again, if, if you're interested in seeing our treatment facility, more than happy to give you a, a, uh, a tour of the facility, um, which again, we did win an award, best plant in, 19, in 2016. It goes up to a 90 million gallon storage pond. So there is where uh, it sits. And then from there, uh, last year we took 30 million gallons and we did cut back. So we had over 100 acres, now we're at 40 acres spraying with intermittent spraying. Uh, we can now spray without runoff. So we sprayed 30 million gallons on the spray area uh, last year and we discharged about 70 million gallons at the RABs. It's the same uh, treated effluent. Same condition. Yes. And you were saying uh, it was said that the run off into Merrill Lake from that spray irrigation was a reason the state of New Hampshire asked you to stop. They, they uh, issued this administrative order because uh, you know where the ski area is? 
I know what's gear is. So on either side we're spraying and then the spray was getting into surface water uh, leading down to the pond down by Moody's uh, pit and then out yeah, and into, yeah. into Mirror Lake. So okay. once we found that out, we stopped that area right away and uh, we continue to cut back until we have now, and then we stopped the way we're spraying so we have no runoff. So the water now, that spray is going into the ground and, and back with transpiration. So that is working properly. So well. the water that was used there is it the same condition as the water at the RIB. It's the same going in, but it's different because when it goes into the RIB, it still has small amounts like 0 0.4 to 0.5 milligrams per liter of phosphorus. Okay. So it gets taken out in the sand as it, so the breakout is actually cleaner than and what's going in. You got a saturation point yet too. Uh, where? As the, as the phosphorus is us are absorbed by the sands. Again, we did a study of that this year too because we're concerned this phosphorus is being captured in the first couple of feet, so it's not uh, yeah, being. Uh, well, then you've got more added into it. If it's, if it's saturated, it's got to go somewhere. Again, we have a mass there that can collect it. We went down deep. It's not transmitting, so there's a certain time we can haul that off. The point I want to make is the water going, what was going into Merrill Lake, and the water going into 19 Mile Brook are the same. No, nope, they're not. Because the one, the Mirror Lake was surface water, so the water was sprayed. It, it was reduced, but it still had that 0.4 to 0.5 milligrams per liter phosphorus. The phosphorus traveled on the surface. It didn't get tied up in the soil because it was supposed to go in the ground. So, the, so Mirror Lake was getting surface water, even though it was diluted, so the levels were much level, uh, smaller getting into Mirror Lake. In, in the RIDs, that 0.4 is now reduced to 0.01 down at the bottom, and then it's diluted, so it's at background levels by the time it hits the brook. So 19 Mile Brook is not seeing any phosphorus above background, where Mirror Lake was seeing phosphorus above background. What I'm saying is, once you have saturation of your RIDs, right. yeah, and it's going to creep into my 19 Mile Brook. <clears throat> Again, that's what Either, we, you don't know how hydrology works. It goes underground. It may go above, as you say, but it may stay underground and find its way into the ESCA. Whatever your argument is about it not going into Mirror Lake, it's still the Indy Mile Brook does feel, feed Mirror Lake. All depends on what the beaver do. So the argument is Mirror Lake is still getting affected by the RIB, and 19 Mile Brook is getting affected by the RIB. And my 1,300 feet on my 19 mile brook is being affected by the RIB. I want to see it stopped. So you want to eliminate it? Right. Well, again, uh, you made the statements. There is impact, but it's not environmentally significant impact. So the fact that you, there may be some uh, negligible amount that you can measure, it's not having a, a, a significant environmental impact. So. Again, my job is to make sure that that continues that way. We'll continue the testing to show you that it's not doing any harm to the brook. Um, but again, I, I can't, uh, again, the, the difference again is the phosphorus. There's no phosphorus getting to 19 mile brook, and that's where the damage would be with regard to increased eutrophication or growth of. Uh, well, well, I question your assumption there because nowhere have I seen any indication of any testing along the as your 19, brook, 19 mile brook that I own? No, we haven't gone beyond that property because we, we do it on the property and on the Witten property and we take one, we used to take a sample as it come into 19 mile bay, but the last sample was at 109A there by the brook. So you're, you're downstream of that, right? Yeah. And we could, we can do some testing. We've always offered to do whatever uh, to, to help people uh, relieve them that there's not a significant impact here, environmental issue, uh, but it's regulatory. We do want to get it corrected. And uh, again, we've been more than happy to continue working with the Conservation Commission on these studies. Again, uh, the, the fact of uh, the, that PC uh, pharmaceuticals and personal care products are not regulated right now, it is a big issue long term. Uh, the process we use through the aeration in our treatment process, uh, through the, uh, the pond, and then through the groundwater, we have four or five different mechanisms that are going to have better options of retreating those uh, uh, pharmaceuticals and personal care products than most treatment plants. Those, those also are there, people on boats, uh, stuff uh, washing their boats, uh, people uh, in the marinas, uh, the camps, septic systems all have these contaminants. We all put suntan lotion on, we jump in the water, that, those are personal care products. We all, uh, not we all, but a lot of people take medicines, it goes through their bodies and comes out. 
Uh, so what we're going to find in the study, I think, it would be more for our protection than it's going to be an eye-opener, that the background levels are already pretty significant, and that what we're putting in is reduced even though we are concentrated. And again, as an environmental engineer, I do believe we are going to get to this study. What hopeful is we can negotiate the land, get that squared away, uh, get our permits, uh, begin on the, uh, like I say, we, we're going to uh, work with DES on a schedule uh, to complete the permitting, design, and construction and that we also can phase the project, as I talked to uh, Joy Ott, and he said that we could phase it over a two-year period in which we could maybe start some of it this fall, and then we could then continue the next year uh, with it. And it would be a very important study, not only for Tuffamore Roofer, but it actually would actually add uh, the science that's not lacking right now throughout the rest of the country. Well, I guess my concern is the lake is the same lake as Wolfboro as it is in Tuffamore. Now, I'm a Lake Lake monitor, and I have been doing it for 20-some odd years now. And last summer, they did a very extensive deep water testing, uh, dissolved oxygen, and uh, the whole spiel. I was duly flabbergasted by the effort they put into testing. I haven't seen the results yet. But that has... Is that a benchmark? No, but that's an indication of the condition of the waters that are in 19 Mile Bay. Here, estuary, from this estuary. Uh, I continued monitoring for the state of New Hampshire, and my reports have not been forthright. They, you haven't received any reports. I've got the pressure then to bring, you know, give me the data. I want the data. They say the lake is aging normally. Well, we don't know what normal means, but the lake is aging. And there are significant uh, invasive species of weeds in the in the area, several in uh, the Thupton Borough uh, realm. Anything that would increase or affect their continued growth is very concerning to me, and I don't think the state of New Hampshire wants to be able to answer to any public uh, disclosure of that information. It's a jewel, you want to keep it a jewel, but the more you use it, the more you, well, it ain't, it ain't gonna hurt it. It's attitude uh, continues, it's gonna hurt, it's eventually gonna affect everybody. Well, one of the things that we're doing now is a watershed study, okay? Mm -hmm. For the piece of the lake that encompasses Tuftonboro, Moulinboro Bay down to Winter Harbor. Uh, and the contract for the consultant, is has that been awarded or we, we're ready to award that? Is that right? It hasn't been announced. Okay, Maybe. so I anyway, I can't so that. that's going to that's gonna help <coughs> us. Well, the output of that is going to be a roadmap for us going forward. So as we look at, at stuff that goes into the lake, we'll understand places that we can help ourselves in removing stuff going into the lake that uh, that will help improve the water quality. Uh, I, I view this pharmaceutical personal care product study, if there's, you know, the sooner we can get some data there, regardless of whether it's something that uh, is currently uh, within, uh, you know, permittable le levels, uh, the more we can learn about this now, uh, the better off going forward. And we want to continue to do everything we can to, to protect the lake, as well as uh, the watershed areas running into the lake, uh, 19 Mile Brook being one of them. Uh, we got what we got now at the RIB. You're working on a solution to the, to the problem, and uh, it's, um, it's important that, uh, that, that, that a solution that works gets there. I know you're doing development work and testing to get there, but um, Wolfboro and Tuftonboro got left holding the bag when the RIB didn't work. Um, and uh, it affects both communities. Um, uh, the effect on Wolfboro is uh, greater economic or fiscally and in terms of you know, we're under these deadlines to get this, 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 and this done. But uh, as I said before, uh, we really want, as we go forward, to have a situation where um, uh, the, uh, we've got
got things in place to, to, to protect the land, uh, and to identify issues going forward and deal with them uh, in, in a way that is not uh, adverse to the taxpayers of Tuftonboro. Uh, right, well, I don't see any money coming from the Tuftonboro taxpayers again, but we have been trying to keep you informed. Uh, we are with New Hampshire DES. Uh, Tracy Wood is the uh, head of the Wastewater Bureau. She's the one that's, uh, again, reviewing and approving the reports, approving the long-term plan, which is to restore this area. And again, our plan, as I stated pretty clearly, is to acquire that land, either through lease or purchase with the trust, and to do everything we're saying, and we're not intending on moving anywhere for 20, 50 years. So I heard two people say that they'd like to see us go somewhere else. Um, if you're going to fight that battle, you, you, you better start, you know, go to Tracy Woods and see if you can put a stay on stuff. I, I don't think so. I think we, the momentum is, is gone here. We've been for eight years saying we've been doing nothing but fixing the site, staying here, and going to be here long term. So that was always the direction I was going up until today. So I was a little surprised and taken back by selecting all these uh, positions. And, and uh, again, well, I, 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 I can understand your concerns very much. Just to clarify things, I'm not going to be in a position not to fight this just for, merely for the optics. I mean, you are, for all intents and purposes, the average citizen in Tuftonboro is saying to themselves, Wolfboro just wants to pump their septic into Tuftonboro. That's, that's the bottom line. But that's so irresponsible. Are you saying something? So, that's irresponsible. So that's how people think. That's how people think, David. But yeah, because you people like you make statements on No, untrue. it's not like people like me making you statements. You did, in the front it's page. She printed it in the front page, you said it, and it's not true. So maybe we shouldn't be in the newspaper. But the well, maybe we should is, check your facts before the, you talk. Well, wait a minute, okay? You're looking to pick up property in Tufton Grove for what purpose? To restore the wetlands that have been damaged, the groundwater discharge. By your wastewater? Absolutely, our okay. system. So it is your wastewater that's going to be going into Tuftonboro. They treated that for yes. Okay. But versus, all that's a big I'm saying versus spills, the saying that somehow we're going to septic is that up here. You're, you've moved the problem to the border, and now you want to take the problem over the border. Border. It's already and then, over there, and I think that's the difference. It's already uh, over there, and we want to fix we, what's over there. Right. And I, I fully really appreciate you want to fix it. Eight, ten years ago, mm -hmm. when the when the RIV was sighted. Uh, you're approved and, by DES 2007, right, right, right. so it's been there 10 years. I, I, will, I will make the observation, uh, and, and I'm sure DES is doing everything that they're required to do, but um, it's unfortunate that in the distribution of all this stuff from DES, nothing comes to Tuffinboro from DES. I mean, they probably got regs that say, don't doesn't have to go to Tuffinboro because here's what has to do. But I'm just saying that it's exactly, which yeah. is why I went out of my way to send you copies of everything. You, you, you anything did. you guys want, right. anyone who wants to see, talk, or get, I'd be more than happy to, and any, anyone, in, 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 especially property owners are downstream, I'd be more than happy to explain to them so they wouldn't have the fear that's being put in people's minds when people use the wrong terms when they talk about the facility. But, but the, I'm just, you understand what I'm saying. DES is doing what the regs say they need to do, but... And all, that's right, exactly what they do, they just, that's, that's, that's right. right. And we're so saying we do, we've gone beyond you, that. You're, you, you've gone, you're going beyond You're giving right us now. the information, we're not a party at the table with DES. So when we get to a position where we come up with a list of things which will make us feel comfortable mm -hmm. letting you come into Tuftemura, what do we have to stand on? Nothing. DES isn't going to require you to do that massive study. DES isn't going to require you to put in monitoring down the stream. There, we have not been in the process of the permitting. So we haven't been able to put Tuftonboro conditions into the permitting process. We're so we're, si we're in a situation where you're here today and you know, you're a little upset because somebody's taken a hard line with you. No, I think I think the reason why he's upset and we're and I feel the same way is we've put in more monitoring wells. We've taken on a huge amount of uh, of uh, information, and I believe the Tufton Borough Conservation Commission sent and talked to DES. You have been at the table. You've been at the table with selectmen to selectmen. So whether since the failure, uh, you went on tours. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Since yeah. the failure. Yeah. Yeah. 
And we've done that, and we've tried to reach out. They're sending you that. It's our good faith to you at Tuftenboro. No, Tuftenboro, I fully appreciate and, the, and, what has happened with all the reporting. I'm not questioning your veracity there. But at this point in time, you're moving the project into Tuftenboro. See, and that's where we differ. That's oh. where the big difference is because that was always part of it. And that we had a spill there and we want to fix it and we want to take responsible and keep it clean. Break and, I mean, <laughs> break. But, break out. But we want to take responsibility for that space. That's what we want. We're not moving our project further down the thing. We, we would like to put in some of these this, these pilots here to me to be able to put it back to function the way it is. No, I appreciate and all, that's good, what, all good stuff. And I appreciate the efforts that you're making to make this project work. I'm not talking about that aspect of it. What I'm talking about is the optics of it. You're now moving your project into Tufta Road. We've got to talk about that. And it doesn't matter what you want. It doesn't matter how you feel. We are... We are answerable to the people of Tuftonboro. They're, they're telling us what to do. Now, that whether or not you know, we just want to fall over and say fine to whatever you want. I, I, guess, I guess the thing that I have, the, the thing is that we have an issue with some land in Tuftonboro. We're not all of a sudden, this isn't something new. We're asking to do it. It was part of the original. That's where I'm having the problem with what you're saying. You're saying we're now moving into Tuftonboro. This was always part of the bigger project. What happened there is we're trying to fix that portion of it. You see it as moving down and taking time. So when time you purchased again. the property from, from uh, uh, Stockman or Witten originally, was it their understanding that their land was going to be impacted yeah, on the Tuftonboro side? They, yes. So in, included in the purchase and sale of that property, there's information that the your project extends into Tuftonboro for whatever reason. Yeah, we show again, we show the right of way coming through, we have a 40 foot right of way. Yeah. We show the groundwater discharge zones. Mm -hmm. And that's where it was, again, these maps here and the map I had at the selections meeting was the original maps from 07, which showed the discharge zone being in this area. Mm -hmm. um, in this area? Nope, nope, across the road. Over there? Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. And again. I think that's where we're having the trouble, is because you see us moving in. And we we've always well, been there. We were there from the beginning, and it was all laid out, and it was very clear that that was going to be there. And I think that's where, I, at least, that's where I feel like I'm the, reacting to you. So you did the taking prior to this. The, the difference is that the impact was anticipated to be all underground. Is that right? That's correct. That's, so that's no, not, nothing on the surface. That's correct. All somewhere deep underground, it's broken out now, and so now it's come to the surface, huh? Yeah. But it, I mean, you effectively did a taking when you bought the land, if that's the case. You already, it, it, it let's say that, this, Well, let's say that the Whittens at that point knew that it was there, they sold, they got a bunch of money for the land, and they had no problem with it coming out there. Okay, because that, I mean, that if somebody I else that bought that land, their assumption would be that they could put a house there. That would be incorrect because, again, the steep slope, it was already wetlands, it was not developable, which is why it wasn't much of a concern. I think that's where we're having the, I think that's where we're having the, the, the difference between you and me. Is that seems to be what I'm having the reaction to because that's always part of it. And you see it as all of us moving mm -hmm. into Tuft and Girl, and I think that's... Well, you are. I mean, you're buying property or, or taking it. But, but we already... So it was all part of the discharge if it, there. If it's all part of the discharge area, we come back to my first question at the Wolfram meeting, is why do you need to, need to own the property? And we don't technically need to own it. Yep. It was the wishes of the property owner that we purchased it versus the lease. We do mm -hmm. need to have control over it for... <clears throat> The life right. right. So it makes more sense for us to own it and take all the liability which we've already taken, you know, that responsibility for. Just a question, when you purchased that land, was that a possibility of future expansion? No. The system? No. No, we thought at that time 600000 was more than enough and, and again it was um, in it restrictions. It, ma it matched our plan. Capacity. You're right, that's what it matched the plant. Plant capacity. So we looked at some uh, and DES wanted us to do that, to match the uh, plant's capacity with our form of disposal. I don't, I don't have all the facts uh, memorized, but I believe that you had failures in that system back in 2009 
or thereabouts. Yes, that's when it first started. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, um, and how much we were applying then? We started off uh, close to the permit capacity the first few months, and then it's a uh, sold. That per thing. What was that? Six hundred thousand gallons six, a day. So six hundred thousand. So your permit is up for six hundred. Yeah, you have six hundred thousand. No, no. We, we've now renewed the permit every five years, so we're down down to three forty, and we're up for another renewal, which will be. Uh, if I was in your shoes, I'd be looking. Well, geez, uh, do I have? I get two hundred fifty thousand gallons of of expansion capacity there. Look, you looking at town of Wolfboro, looking down the road. If I had, they had to expand the system because the voters said we want additional area sewer. There's your 250,000 gallons, and there's your better acreage. Well, oh, there's additional fields. There's more acreage between there and the same. Huh. I'm just saying, looking at it from that perspective. And again, the concern to me uh, as a Tufton Borough uh, resident is that that's our aquifer. And we're putting you know, stuff that we don't really know all, all the potential impacts in. And there's no argument whatsoever that they're coming from septic systems, from beaches, yada, yada. But that is something, there's not a whole lot of, any, of anything on that aquifer. And as we're trying to protect the Great Marsh Aquifer, this is right up there too, because there's not a whole lot of development on it. And as David said, there's no place else for them to go. So one would assume from that statement that if they get this piece of property and let's say it's 25 years from now and there's more need from Wolfboro, obviously the expansion is going to continue into Tuftonboro because they can't go into Wolfboro. But I think what you're not, not realizing out of here to do that expansion, the cost on a, on a thousand users and on to the town, it's the same thing that controls what happens in your town will control in ours. Wastewater treatment and piping stuff is very expensive. You know, to say that we're just going to oh, we'll do that, it, that well, would I, be... I, I'm not, I'm, it's not without its problems, but it, it'd be a voter item, you put it on a bond, there's, there's a way, you, you have the mechanism and the, the potentially the land to expand. That's, to me, is, and again, I, I don't, I, I don't really want to get into this. That's for you guys to figure out. My, my concern is that water chemistry and getting a good understanding mm -hmm. of what that water chemistry is so that everybody, Tufton Borough residents, uh, Tufton Borough selectmen, Wolfboro selectmen, Wolfboro residents know what's in there and then you, you can make adjustments as you go along. You're establishing a baseline now of what's there and not there and then tracking to see what kind of changes you have. Forward. That's to me is what I we, we try to work to get uh, USGS involved. Uh, I'm sorry, Alyssa. Okay, I'm studying the map. Um, my understanding is the Witten Trust got 1.2 million dollars for selling that 25 30 acre parcel. Did Tuftonboro object to them selling it? For the stated use, is that not allowed in Tuftonboro, or I mean, was it that was an all issue? We didn't have a stand. We didn't have standing. The land that Wolfboro purchased from the Witten Trust was all in Wolfboro. That was just in Wolfboro. And are they allowed to sell that six acres? If you're concerned about it. Well, that's only one of the stuff. I mean, I, I, we can go on and on, and I don't think either of the parties here from Wolfboro. A full grasp on it, nor do I, on the significance of the eminent domain proposition. But I think Wolfboro can purchase the property. Uh, yes. I don't think there's any way we can keep them from doing that. What we can do at that juncture, and hopefully before that, is come up with some sort of agreement as to what's going to happen. Your concern is the use of that, too. Well, at that point, we are parties. And at that point, we can get involved and have the properties used. The, it's not zoned for an industrial uh, disposal site. It's, it's not zoned for commercial septic what's a, what's disposal. A I'm sorry, what's a gravel pit considered? It's a low density residential. You have a gravel pit approved a lot. Right, we went through the permitting yeah. processes right. to do that. 
So just because your neighbor's doing X doesn't mean you don't have to go through the same hoops to do X. So we have to, that whole process, now we can get involved. But until the land changes hands, we can't. And so the, the but issue But if they is, come up with a price, that will for us. I think it would be hard pressed to stop them from purchasing it. I mean, Wolfboro can purchase land and, mm. and talk to them. <coughs> And it should be noted that once we do acquire the property one way or another, uh, we will be coming to the Town Conservation Commission because there will be a wetland permit for the restoration. So they will be, at that point, the Conservation Commission will uh, chime in as they do a normal permit. So uh, when it does come to, so they will be involved at least in the wetland uh, permitting process. We'll get into the plans early on so they can be involved in the design development. Also, say have comments when we get there early. Good. I, I think we've, we've had a, a, a kind of a wide ranging and a long conversation today. Um, and uh, Dave and Linda, I thank you for coming to meet with us today. And uh, let me reiterate that going forward, it's important that we find a solution that works. Absolutely. Uh, works for Wolf Girl. Thank you, you too. Bye. <laughs> no, the meeting isn't adjourned, but you're welcome. No, I just said no. Yeah, yeah, we're well, on. Everyone's bailing. <laughs> <laughs> we're just, uh, just standing up for a moment. Stress legs. We're just getting started. <laughs> <laughs> now the real meeting goes. <laughs> now, now the, the regular. I gotta ask you. You're busy. You have a very busy Monday morning. Yep, that's right. It's surprising to me that, he has, that, he doesn't talk. that they thought that we weren't going to put up some sort of resistance. Like he's my boss. Yeah, he's It's all like you know him. Ask Larry. Uh-oh. Oh, no. It's a lot smaller. Uh, no proof of that. <laughs> no proof of that. All you're, right. You're carrying more paper. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see anything. So let's, let's go to the signature file. Um, Thanks for coming in, Steve. The uh, uh, first item is I have uh, intents to excavate for PIDs 16-2-19, 33-2-4, 32-2-6, and 32-2-12. These are the annual uh, excavation permits for, oh, okay. for uh, existing, all, all existing, yeah, right, right. right. So we, uh, I, I will entertain a motion. Uh, for approval of those. I'll move approval. Okay. Uh, do we have a second? I will second. Uh, any discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed?
is a supplemental warrant. This is uh, for uh, collection of supplemental taxes for the betterment easement um, up at Zadiga Farm. Uh, the total amount of the warrant is $4,560. Um, approval. Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Motion passes. and uh, it was a, for a one-year term. Uh, in this memorandum of understanding uh, uh, signifies our intent to uh, enter into negotiations for a follow-on contract uh, that will start when this one ends and may extend for a term longer than one year. So, Yes, sir. I know that you have been intimately involved in that. Yeah. Did I read in the Tufton Road Times that we've saved the town about $1,800, or is that the projected savings? Uh, uh, that, that may be the projected right. savings, yeah. Right. yeah. We pay, right now, we pay about a uh, penny and a half per kilowatt hour or less than uh, the co op's uh, current power rate. Um, it isn't huge, but it is every thousand dollars say it is thousand dollars say right i'll move the question okay i'll second all right all in favor aye aye i think this just requires one signature so let's look at the this doesn't commit us to anything other than the being involved in the negotiation levy in the, the amount of $46.76 for 32-2-6. And I have a gravel tax levy in the amount of $124.15 for 
32-2-12. I'll move to go on north. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. septic replacement at the library. I want to make sure before we get that signed that there's a location of the box is is didn't Jack get involved in that he, he did. Uh, and uh the, he'll come back before we end yep. today. So we'll, we'll leave that one to the side. I will say on this for the record I since we had our last meeting with my other job I've gone to four towns with my other job to get tax cards. You know, I paid my dollar and I get reimbursed for it. Every one of those towns have gone to it. They pay about two grand. Mm -hmm. And, you know, without asking a loaded question, I said, how does it work? Always positive. So I'm leaning away from my, <laughs> from your position. That's fine. And, yeah. I, and I, I just need a, lot more, a little more information yeah. before yeah. I decide. All right. Uh, I have a right. A burial uh, for uh, this is the uh, Town Hall Cemetery, Section F, uh, lots 41 through 44. So I'll move approval. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Motion carries. six acres and three acres is what well. so that's how it's to 12 and something so they're holding out five acres obviously for the house for the house yeah barn. yeah I'll move approval I'll okay. second 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Just an editorial comment on our uh, gravel tax. Um, seems a bit ridiculous. You had approximately between sixty and seventy thousand dollars worth of product come out, and the tax on it was forty-six dollars. Yes. And with that, for, with the forty-six dollars, we are now supposed to do all of the uh, gravel pit monitoring and closure permits and all the rest of it. I mean, something's got to give. Either the state's going to have to step up a little bit, or maybe they should review the gravel taxes or something. Yes, I got it. Yes. How many yards have you moved in your lifetime? <laughs> a million? <laughs> wow. Correspondence here. Um, yeah, we're good for that. Uh, all right, we have here a quote for a new laptop computer to, to replace one that's the old one is dead. Is that right? Yes. Karen? Well, it has um, my my personal one. No, I'm talking about the town's one. That has XP on it, so we're ah, okay. not too all right. anymore. So we're looking at. It's now disposed of. Huh? Um, Karen uses a laptop when we're up at the townhouse, when she's at. Uh, okay. Uh, in those. What do we do with the old ones? The hard drive was taken out. It was disposed of. Okay. Okay. Right. That's what I was concerned so, about. Is there any town so information? Yeah. Eight hundred and thirty dollars, and we have money in the budget for this. We have supply money. That wasn't that particular item was not put in the budget. Okay. So. Um, if, if we got sufficient, uh, I don't want us to run out of paper late in the year because we bought a new laptop now. Right. I know what you're saying, yes, to answer your question is sufficient. Um, and I want to say there was something else we did, um, oh, the coffee or if it oh, makes anybody feel any better. We're, we're, we're saving $300 on that printer. As right? well as the page per print cost, so okay, it would help offset All right. that. I'll move. I'll second. All in favor? All right. right. Okay. All right. Yep. All right. Uh, we have a, a uh, correspondence with notification here from White Horse Addiction Center for their third annual freedom event, silent auction and dinner fundraiser this, uh, this Friday, April 6th. Uh, from 5.30 to 8.30 at First Congregational Church of Ospie in Center Ospie. Uh, anybody wants to participate? Uh, I'm going to go to that uh, meeting at the Tamworth Library Good. tomorrow. Good. So. All right. have a letter here from the New Hampshire Division of Historical Resources uh, informing us that Lucknow, Castle in the Clouds, uh, will soon be considered by the New Hampshire State Re Historical Resources Council for nomination to the National Register of Historical Places. Um, and it's uh, many paragraphs explaining the whole process, but uh, if, if we wish to comment on whether the property should be nominated to the National Register, uh, we've got to uh, until the 26th of April uh, at the State Division of Historical Re Resources to make our uh, uh, opinion known. It's an, it, it, I just have one little opinion. Yeah. It's really an unfortunate name, and I'm not certain what plant would have chosen it, but I would assume that Lucknow was the site of probably the worst massacre of an indigenous people in India by the British. Yeah. And I don't think that's, maybe we shouldn't memorialize that, but. That's what it was named for, Castle. Yeah. 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 Similar, yep. circular. All right. Outbroken. Um, I have an email here from Representative Marsh 
uh, letting us know that uh, House Bill 1802 was uh, designated as inexpedient to legislate, which means it didn't get it didn't get passed. Yeah. So, and that that was the one on uh, school funding or the school tax. Yeah, that was the one that that takes the you know, the statewide property tax and diverts the excess directly to the state journal fund. Uh, essentially increasing our local taxes by a million something a year. Exponential. Yeah, huge. Yeah. Uh, close to three million. Um, we received notification from the uh, state DES that our grant for reimbursement on uh, milk oil control for the year has been approved. And I apologize, I don't have that number. It's, uh, I think it's 25% of what we expend this year that, uh, that they will reimburse. It's, uh, but, uh, right, we have a uh, question here from Karen on credit card versus debit card. We had the conversation before about whether we were, wanted to look at a debit card. And uh, Diane says she prefers a credit card. I, uh, I think I agree with that. That it's it, it, a debit card provides direct access into the town's <laughs> checking account, uh, whereas a credit card has got a, a step in there before it gets paid. So, um, and uh, you need a so, motion. So we're we're looking to add a credit card, uh, one that will. Uh, be under Jack Parsons and can be used for uh, purchases here at the town offices. Uh, and what's the limit? Uh, there is the two current cards, police chief and fire chief have, each have a $1,000 limit uh, and we've had a request that that be increased to $2,000. At least two, they said. And they so uh, it would seem appropriate to me that we do that all of the cards have a two thousand dollar limit, uh, and uh, I've asked the department heads about this, and uh, they've explained. You know, they go to order something for their cruisers or their trucks, and these companies won't send you a bill, and you know, they just won't take your business unless you give them a credit card number. So, uh, can I make a motion that? So I'll ask you, I want all three cards to be $2,000 limits. Do we need to go two, one, two uh, motions or do no, it in one? I, I think we can do it in one motion. So my motion will be, however you want to word it, that we go $2,000 for Jack and $2,000 on the other two cards. Okay. I'll second. All right. Any further discussion? Uh, I. Aye. Aye. I'm sorry. All in favor? Yeah. Okay. Motion passes. Uh, this is uh, uh, a an email regarding solid waste regional joint contracting. LRPC is exploring the possibility of a regional joint contract for Lakes Region Town solid waste. We'd like to gather information in order to help towns find uh, find the best contract. And again, this is along the lines of what we're trying to do in some other areas with a cooperative arrangement, uh, a larger volume uh, on contract has the potential to get better pricing. Uh, and so they're asking for uh, sharing information on our volumes, uh, uh, on our waste volumes. I think you pass that along to Clay, right? Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I, on, I on, on that note, yeah. he drafted me. I went to Alton with him and we investigated uh, issues with um, Wayne, mm -hmm. stations, and while he's there, Jack, he, uh, he has a list of questions for him. He also, you know, Clay, this is my report to the town, yep. all yep. of these things. We recently went up to uh, see Ken at um, uh, Moultonboro, and Ken quizzed him on an island day similar to what we do. What we yep. do. It's going to be another day 
other than that, but you know, you know Clay has the ear of these <laughs> surrounding yep. people. As a matter of fact, I was on another case having nothing to do with the town, and I'm on Snow Road in uh, in uh, Effingham, and their little recycling operation. Hey, how they saw me, tucked him a nameplate on my car. How's Clay doing? So he has a a following, shall I oh, say? Oh yeah, yeah. All right. I have a note in here uh, about uh, doors on the equipment shed up on 171 being pushed open. Yes, uh, I left a message for Jim. I noticed that the barn doors on the tractor shed on 171 were pushed open when they went back the snow in the state that I know in the past he and his crew have fixed like the roof, so I asked him to look into it. Okay. Uh, and another note on uh, dislodgement of a rock in the triangle at 109 High Street in Melbourne Village. Yes, during the recent snowstorm, a plow truck had dislodged a couple of rocks from the little triangle at 109 and High Street, and his guys went down and replanted them in that little garden triangle. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is uh, an email you passed along, Lloyd. Yes. Um, Want me to read it on the record? Sure. Okay, I've received the attached letter from Jess, Jeff Hayes at Lakes Region and his concern for the town. Uh, the letter is, hi Lloyd, how's it going? Uh, another note, uh, do, do you have any tax delinquent properties in town that may have fuel tanks or oil stains? Can we get a list of your tax delinquent properties? We have 100% Brownfields funding to assist with these types of properties. We are also aware that many shorefront owners buried fuel tanks before any permits were required and we can access grant funding to remove these tanks free of cost. And that's Jeff Hayes, uh, who's the chairman there. Uh, I sent a copy to here, conservation and also code enforcement, and I made the comment, uh, I was thinking of the reported old dump site on Lang Pond Road that we heard Sue talk about. <coughs> I was wondering if there's some buried tanks on some of the uh, properties. Yeah, you need more to Yeah. Um, okay. Right. Yes. Thank you. Um, on some of the properties that we're talking about getting rid of junk cars and whatnot, I'm wondering what else is there. I pass that on to Jack. Also, there was an old town dump that's behind the town garage on the edge of the dirt meadows, easy on Sodom Road. Uh, I had Steve look at this and he made the comment, Steve Wingate, yes, any of this information can help us manage in the future. No request for a list of tax delinquent properties. It's something for nothing. Yeah, yeah. no, um, yeah, absolutely. Now, can I work with Karen yeah. and, and move forward? That'd be great. Thank you. Uh, okay, we have a, or the LRPC has a letter here that we're copied on regarding uh, two intersections in Tufton Road. I know it's been an ongoing source yes. of conversation. The 109-109A intersection in Melvin, uh, that's, that's a sharp corner, and the uh, Route 171 Ledge Hill Road intersection that has uh, very poor di visibility mm -hmm. issues because you're trying to enter it. Okay. Yeah, I'm not, I am not going to read the whole letter here, but uh, he goes through and uh, identifies a number of the factors at each of the intersections. And uh, what he says is work to address both intersections is beyond a small scale maintenance operation. Realignment uh, of both would require a formal project inclusion in the 10 year transportation improvement plan. Town should work with the abutter at Ledge Hill Road intersection to reach some agreement to improve sight line, sight distance for motorists. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, what what he's saying? And this this letter is from Alan Hanscom, who's a district engineer uh, for our uh, district three. Um, is that if anything's going to get done on these? It's the only way, the, the vehicle to get them done is to get it in the 10-year maintenance plan, right? Uh, <coughs> or transportation improvement plan. And 
Mark Howard has very quietly worked on behalf of the town on a number of projects. And Lakes Region Planning has worked with them. First mm -hmm. of all, they've kept, for example, Mark and Lakes Region got the repaving of 171 back on the 10-year plan. I'd like to make two suggestions. Number one, could I have a, a color copy of uh, this letter? The other thing is, would it be appropriate and would it be cost effective to put the entire letter along with the color pictures right on the town website? Uh, I think it's fine. Uh, I, I think put it up on the town website is fine. Uh, you know, it's, uh, I, will make it's a, I will make a comment. Um, I'm aware that two people were almost killed at the Four Corners last, uh, last year. A, uh, one was coming up the hill, 171, one was coming down the hill, and a trailer truck loaded with chips at 35 miles an hour came up from the school, and both of them, uh, why they weren't hit, I don't know. So how does one go about getting it on the 10-year transportation improvement plan? Is that something that... That's something that Lakes Region Planning and Mark Howard are continuing okay. to investigate. Did you see this? They did. Yeah. yeah. All right. And you want to address your... Uh, yes. Yes. I first penned this January 12th, but I held off. Um, I'm always looking to combine resources here. The town of Tuckenborough was well served by our department heads and different committee chairmen. There were two individuals that have served the town well. Our road agent Jim Bean arrived at midterm several terms ago and has been re-elected three times. Uh, he very seldom, uh, no, excuse me, has never increased his hourly rates. He oversees the largest uh, budget total in town and he needs to respond to some serious weather conditions that no one can predict. His equipment is subject to constant adverse work conditions. His program saves the town substantial dollars in equipment costs, labor costs, and employee benefits. Clay Gallagher at the transfer station has had an excellent record of his department management and savings to the town. Both departments are similar in that they are an industry that provides services to the public. Clay currently works 36 hours a week. He has reached the end of his pay range. He has a proven record of problem solving with budget constraints. My suggestion is that the town authorize Clay to work up to four hours a week as an administrative assistant to the road agent. Clay would assist the road agent in research, planning, and the administration of his efforts as a road agent. Jim can manage the day-to-day -day operations, they are demanding and do not leave much time for administrative support. This is a win-win situation. We can try it for the next two years. And I have a suggestion on how we can fund it. Yes. And it would come out of Jim's budget, the top one. Yeah, well, he's overspent his winter budget as we yes. talked about earlier. Yes. So so what you're suggesting is that we, uh, this board, employ Clay to do administrative work for the road agent? That he would work for the road agent, get paid by the road agent. Yeah, I think the road agent has to bring that to us. He's yeah, elected. right. And why do we have them both in? Talk about it. Uh, I... Uh, uh, the road agent, as an elected official, yes. right, uh, controls within his budget how he spends his dollars, how he allocates his resources. Uh, I don't have any problem with him saying, uh, I need uh, some administrative help and I've got money to pay for it. But I, uh, I think it takes on a whole different flavor if this board says, Here's here's how here's how we're going to help you, Mr. Road Agent, to do your job. Yeah, yeah, we're we're going to provide you with a resource out of the budget that you already have, uh, whether you like it or not. Uh, uh, I'm not suggesting that. Okay, so he he has he has the responsibility for administration of his yes. 
his operation. Um, and uh, so, I, if he thinks it's a good idea, uh, then I think he can do it. Yeah, he needs to bring the idea to us. Okay. I don't think we need to bring the idea to him. I'm not <laughs> suggesting he never talk to him again, but that's how it's going to work. I mean. Okay. All right, so we have a number of correspondence items with no action required in here. Uh, I, I have nothing in there I want to bring up. All right. <coughs> hmm? That's, okay. That's, That's a good idea so you had. You know, it's uh, uh, a number of, anybody that's interested in going through this stuff, it's, yep. it's great stuff. There are a number of property transfers in here. I didn't, I was going to go through and count them over. Uh, easily half of them are, are uh, family transfers, which means that there isn't any, trust, yeah, trust uh, any, any dollars change in hands. Of the ones that were sales, um, some sold for more than their assessed valuation, some sold for less than their assessed valuation. So it's, it's uh, uh, I don't, going through and looking at these, I don't see that, hey, everything's, uh, everything's great. Um, I do want to highlight the invitation for bid from the fire and rescue on, for uh, a new piece of apparatus. Uh, it's on the town website. Uh, bids are due to the fire station by Thursday, May 10th. And the bids will be open at the selectmen's meeting on Monday, May 14th. Uh, and uh, they did identify the bid will not be awarded at that time, which is <coughs> the bid opening will be at our meeting on the 14th of May. Uh, this is for um, the, the new piece of apparatus that was approved uh, on the town warrant this year. All right. So now we're. Oh, I skipped right over Selectman's updates. I'm sorry. All right, Selectman's updates. Um, As per our conversation on Friday, I went up and uh, took a look at the boat launch. Up. Yep. Uh, and there was no stake in the water. The, the stake that I think they're referring to is on the land, and nothing's changed there. The uh, there was one rock moved back out into the road or next to the roadway, I guess to give a easternmost terminus to the parking area. So I think we need to get um, the road agent up there to move that back and start okay. line of rocks. Um, and I don't know that we're at full pond yet. Are we going to ride down to the dam? But even with us not being at full pond, the boat launch is what, what it is, what it's always been. It's mm -hmm. right next to the bridge. So that gray and stake that was in the in that uh, drawing di didn't. I didn't see a gray stake in the water okay. yeah, at yeah. that location. So I guess, I didn't maybe they put a pin down. Did you well, see it? Was, no, no. It was not identified as a pin or a monument. It was just a gray stake yeah. that we had in there, so it may have come out before. Um, ice fishing season. <coughs> yeah, I, I think uh, hopefully they can talk about. I think we we're pretty clear that that's the boat launch we've got, and we're happy with it. That's, that's all we're gonna get. What's what's there and today? Is, yeah. Where are you, where are you speaking? Uh, this no, is on on no, on, pond. on, on uh, uh, Lower oh, Beach Pond oh, okay. on Brown Road, yeah. the area uh, by the culvert there where folks. Yeah. One of their boats. Yeah, bomb houses and, and boats go in. Yeah, there has been some conversation about the possibility of a boat launch area on the other side of the pond, up off of Tibbetts Road. Uh, but that's a huge mountain boat territory. Well, it's, that, that's a huge undertaking because it, there's a road that it's a private road that would have to become town road. Uh, and there is no boat launch there currently. There's a piece of shoreline, but uh, it's private property. I, and I know there's been some conversation about an access point for the fire department to draw water 
up there down at the end of Tibbetts Road. Uh, nothing formal at this point that I'm aware of there. And certainly to go from that idea to a, a boat launch, uh, that's there are a lot of steps and, and, and whatnot between there and there, here and there. And the other thing is um, the nature of where boats are put in down on Brown Road now sort of limits the boats that go in. Um, anything, I think, beyond a small fishing boat would be pretty tough to get in down in that area. If we put a ramp in up on the other end, up by the dam, uh, then, then you... Uh, put a new one in there. Yeah. Or put put some, some... It's tall. Larger... Uh, Large craft in there. Okay. Yeah. And, and I'm going to the. Um, I lost my notice, but I'm looking at the moving on the oh, the addiction problem. Yeah. It's a, in uh, Tamworth tomorrow morning at nine. Yeah. Boyd. Kingswood Regional High School Senior Dawson Cotro, C O T R E A U, lives in East Wakefield. Is a on the, he's a student out of the Student Work Study Program of uh, Kingswood. He works at the Tufton Borough Fire Department. He's also an Eagle Scout. Uh, he recently won <coughs> the Albert Dow Award, and I request that we send a letter of uh, recognition. Good idea. Al Dow was a friend of yours, a friend of mine. You guys used to ski together or, or whatnot. Uh, just for the record, he died about 30 years ago making a rescue on uh, Mount Washington. He's a, he's a hero from Tufton Borough. So I'd like to give that information to Karen. Great. Oh, thank you. Uh, do we have a target date for um, the computer server update uh, for the police department, Aaron? I spoke to Tom last week, and he's him and the chief are trying to coordinate to get together. Yeah. Is there anything? In, well, I guess I'm asking the wrong person. Uh, I'm wondering if there's anything the selectmen can do to. I move the process along. No, it's just them trying to get their schedules. I'm not trying to mind their business, but to me, record keeping for a police department is. Uh, the other thing is, have, have we received a copy of the uh, new parking regulations? No. But, okay. Uh, the ones that we worked on on yes. election day. And he was going to improve the draft, and we were going to sit down and review them again, right? Yeah. Uh, do we need to make a motion on the lifeguard appointment? That we do. Why, why, you want to take care what, of that? What's we, his name? We interviewed Isaiah Henriksen for the aquatic director position during our work session, or before our work session on Friday. And uh, uh, he's a young man that has. Uh, pretty extensive experience, waterfront, working up at uh, Camp Central, among other places. Uh, and uh, um, comes highly recommended. So I, I would, I, I will move that we appoint Isaiah Hendrickson as uh, Tuffin Rose Aquatic Director. I second, season. I second that and I'd like to make a comment. Um, there's money in the budget. The Recreation Department has done an excellent job. Uh, I happen to, quite by accident, bump into a couple of people who know this gentleman. And I asked a question, and one of them uh, has worked for him. I said, would you hire him again, knowing what you know now? He says, yes, and I'll put that in writing. And the other two were complimentary. So uh, thank you to the Recreation Committee. Welcome aboard, Isaiah. I move the question. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. I have two other things. We're at the busy time of year. 
And uh, I'm wondering, uh, would it be appropriate, for example, I think in April, we have five Mondays and two of them were not meeting. I personally would rather come in and handle just a few items each of those Mondays and you know, be here all day. So uh, could there be a suggestion that we add one or two Mondays to the schedule? Uh, we, we could certainly add uh, time or we could do a Friday work session. I'm totally flexible. I got to be here Friday to sign checks. So it's the week of the twenty third. One of those Mondays. We meet. Uh, we meet two nine and twenty three. Okay. So uh, and you know, we don't, don't meet on the sixteenth or the thirtieth. Uh, I can't add anything else on the week of the twenty third. Okay. So. If we're going to add something, I guess it would have to be the 16th or the or a Friday. I mean, it, yep. But I just believe the 23rd. I'm really not available. Yep. Uh, There's another reason why I suggest this. You made the suggestion last year that on some of our hot topics we talk about it, and but the video and the YouTube do their thing, and that has been excellent in my mm -hmm. opinion. It is, it's, uh, I'm not saying it's on every issue, but you know it allows people to pick up the phone or see me sure. someplace and, and bend my ear. And, and I like that suggestion. So, Well, I'm going to suggest that we schedule a work session for Friday the 13th. Um, we're, we're meeting next Monday. We are not meeting on the 16th, and I know that's a bet. If we meet on the 16th, somebody's going to subscribe because you're not here that day, but which is, we, we could get around, but, uh, so if we, if we have a work session on the 13th, then that kind of covers that in between week. Yeah, I, I agree with that. That works. Yeah. That works. And then if, if something crazy. So we can, and we can firm up what we're going to deal with next week. Sure. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, the next thing I wanted to bring up was task assignments. Okay. I think it was Friday we talked about this a little bit. Yes. I, and I, in volunteering to create a um, file and checklist on Warren articles, I think I volunteered to be the budget committee. Rep again. Rep again. And I, I don't mind doing that at all. Um, and I'm all currently doing parks and rec, so I don't mind doing that. I I don't think I've ever come to an act night meeting. I just haven't done it. The grass grows without you, sir. It seems yeah. to. I, I'm not a terribly good gardener as it is. On that note, um, I have some free time coming up, and there's two thoughts in my mind. First of all, as chairman, having just been through it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the, the, you know, you have some additional responsibilities and whatnot. I'd like to volunteer for the CIP committee. Okay. And you're going to stay on the planning board? I'm on the planning board. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. That's yeah. important for yep. continuity. Yes. Yep. Okay. Okay. I'm happy. That, that's <laughs> fine. Yeah. Um, that's it. What I have. Do the rest remain the same? Conservation? The rest, yeah. Do you, yes. Does anybody want to be added to ag? What's that? Does anyone want to go? I'll try to go to ag. I mean, unless you want to go, Bill. I just don't. Ag motion? Uh, I'll do ag. I mean, uh, I'm uh, giving up a significant time uh, requirement with CAP, so that's going to be fine. All right, uh, the only item that I have that I want to highlight is uh, planning board Thursday night, Mary Pinkham Langer, who's this, this state gravel guru, is, is going to be here. Uh, and we've invited all of the existing um, non-permitted pit owners in Tuffman Grove. We are approaching a time when the non-permitted non pits by law go away. Uh, and so the question, the real question is, where do we go from here? Uh, this was a situation that was um, established 
30 plus years ago by a state legislature and wasn't embraced by us until two years ago. Uh, but we have responsibility for them. Uh, they got to be permitted to operate by law. Uh, the, the, uh, and the challenge for the small pits that we have that, that have been operating along is uh, it, it may take a significant amount of money up front in order to, to do the work you need to do to uh, to permit these pits properly, and uh, so how do we how do we bridge that issue? Uh, guy that doesn't generate a lot of revenue out of his pit, uh, but, but does do some commercial activity. Uh, if he's faced with a huge uh, surveying and remediation plan and all that kind of thing issue. Up front um, becomes no longer an official gravel pit. Does that mean no gravel comes out of there? I don't know, but uh, it, it's it, if if we make the situation too onerous for folks, then it just goes underground. And you know, uh, pardon the pun. But, uh, I, I've heard her speak, and she's excellent. She is excellent, and she has it. She has. Well, we don't. We don't really have any latitude when it comes. I mean, if for let's just say for a moment that the legislature got off their ass and did something, and we ended up with a little more tax revenue from gravel taxes. Right now, we could offset some of that expense. Yes. Take right. on some of the oversight or the creation of oversight. We don't have any revenue to do anything with, and we're sort of stuck between allowing it and I think part of the reason we sat on the fence for so long is because it's been seen as an unfunded mandate from the state so they're telling us we have to do certain things and we're kind of stuck between we need to have supplies of gravel and sand for septic systems and driveways and foundations yeah. um, but if we don't act are we allowing some larger operator to come in, let's say, and buy up a pit with no conditions and just take out, you know, a couple hundred thousand yards and leave it as a desert? I mean, we have to have some regulation as far as closure is concerned. Well, when when the when the law changed, which was in the late '80s, there was a provision that would grandfather all of these small guys that they would never have to do what they have to do now. Right. But because the town of Tuffenboro didn't step up at that time and set it up, there, the, the opportunity for that grandfathering, that window closed in the early 90s. And uh, uh, so that's the, that, that's the ideal way to deal with it is, okay, you're a small pit operator, you've been here, you've been doing this right along, you, you can just keep doing it. Um, but the way the legislation was written, I think it envisioned this, but it wasn't a, an unlimited time period. And 30 years later, we're well beyond that window for having it happen. So I, I, I think it's... Uh, and we don't really have a lot of latitude as far as the type of closure we let happen. No. I mean, we can't customize our closure requirements. The state mandates this. I mean, that... That's part of the big problem. Yes. Is they, there wasn't an exercise of grandfather, and now we're stuck with, I mean, some small pit owner is going to have considerably larger per acre investment. Well, if you don't generate a lot of revenue out of your pit, which most of the small guys don't, mm -hmm. then where are you going to, how is that going to bring you enough revenue to pay the Ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars or more that you need to do to properly have it surveyed and planned and, and all this stuff. Uh, you know, you just bring a little money on, you know, on the side, and it's uh, you don't have to be a sophisticated businessman to recognize that that if you're going to put that much money into into getting an approved uh, pit, you you're going to have to ramp the scale of your operation up significantly. Uh, or you're never going to bring in the, the revenue to offset what you have in a cost. So I, uh, I'm 
interested in the conversation. I hope, I hope we get the existing folks to come out and have a dialogue with her, and maybe there's some wiggle room here that we can find that everybody Yeah, because I don't think you're going to do away with the need. No. Okay. And, and if, if everybody who lives in Tufton or just wants to send the money over to Boston sand and gravel, I guess that's the way it's going to happen. But, I mean, right. That's right. going to ramp up the cost of everything. I mean, if you have to do anything, with it. Right. So that's all. Oh, I got. Do we have any other business? Oh, well, we got hands. Oh, okay. So, yeah, that's we'll, we'll, Mr. Down Mason. at the Town Beach, <clears throat> the the bottom between the State Road and the Town Grass area, that chain link fence got pretty well hit last winter with the state dumping its snow on top of it. Do we pay that, or should the state pay that for its repair? I think it's on our property. We end up with it. Yeah. I, I don't know, but uh, and I haven't been down there to. It's an nice hole right now. Yeah. Um, like this, hmm. nothing's been pushed over, but it's pretty way back. Not aesthetic. Yep. All right. So today I can speak for myself and others. Uh, there is certainly an element of folks in town who find the mere concept that a government entity can take anyone's property by eminent domain both distasteful and abhorrent. We know that there are many laws which are legal but are neither moral nor ethical. So be advised that the general population uh, does have an element that feels that although Wolfboro is trying to fix the problem it created, uh, taking land in Tuftonboro would not be the solution that we would approve of. Thank you. Thank you, Guy. Uh, totally unrelated. Well, <laughs> uh, 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 okay, Alyssa? Oh, did you I'll refer one? to newspaper. Okay. Um, when do you anticipate work commencing on the Sodom Road Bridge? Um, I think we'll, the contractor's going to be here next Monday, yeah, right? I to, believe they're going to begin for, at the to, school belt. To, to, yeah. to sign the contract. Yeah. And that's right, so they'll be in next Monday. Yeah. yeah. So that's the And what is your assessed valuation? Close. Um, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's ten, ten million something. Uh, ten, uh, sorry, no, the, the percentage. The percentage what? Um, like Wolf Road is ninety point. Two. Oh, oh no, we're, we're ninety one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, the equalize is ninety one something. Uh, so you, it's pretty much the same in both areas. Yeah. Our total town evaluation nine hundred eighty two. Right, thousand three hundred. Well, I asked it improperly. Yeah, looking you're at the you're talking about the uh, the letter we had from the state. Yeah, is that right? Ninety-one point four. Yeah. Look at that. Maybe Equalization. This. Yeah. That's supposed to be improved. Yeah. yeah, it should be. Mm -hmm. Okay, Joe. Two two items. Last week I was looking on a piece of paper and. It was about hiring a new employee. Was that in reference to the light guy that you hired today? Yes. Yes, yes thank you. Uh, backing up a couple pages, uh, you talked about this is the LRPC and one come by and gather some information from all the cities and towns to see what to do, whatever. And my only problem with that is a uh, single screen. Uh, Waste. That's right, and we we went through this before, and it sounds to me like if they're going around to several cities and towns, they may be trying to do a collective uh, thing of information. Maybe trying to put all the towns together. But as it stands right now, I thought we were doing pretty well, uh, and I'm jumping ahead in my conclusion. But you know, why else would they want to do that? 
trying to help us out other than helping themselves out. I, 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 do, I don't, did not read anything in that that suggested single stream. Okay. Uh, I, I, I think what they're looking at is understanding volumes of solid waste, maybe volumes of recyclables, and if you can aggregate that and look at potential uh, customers, right? So if if you're if you're doing a deal for 15 times as much solid waste, do you get a better per ton rate? Right. Uh, so uh, you know. I'm just thinking of the revenue that's coming into the town presently right now. You wouldn't want a combination of all that stuff going out the door. Right. Okay. So. And, 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 and I, I don't know if, if they're, uh, I have to go back and look at it, if, if they're looking at, at actually um, uh, just municipal solid waste or if they're looking at other, other streams as well. All right. Thank you. But I, 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 again, I'm sharing information with them and looking at options is not committing us to anything. Right. Uh, and would, certainly would... Uh, uh, before we move forward with a, a, a supply agreement, have the have the opportunity to review it, and it would be our responsibility to approve it uh, if it's in the if it makes sense. Okay, I can affirm what he's saying. Um, I have not picked up any effort to, for example, convert everybody to single stream or something like that is to get information and Lakes Region Planning is working on a number of different things that they help us out on. Uh, and Clay is involved in that. Two of the things that they picked up from him, first of all, Clay is able to save us fuel charges. He doesn't have 50 bales of aluminum, but it's starting to be stored outside. Uh, so he'll coordinate, can a truck come up to Wolfboro? him and Ossipi, they get their 54 bales or whatever the number is, guess what, all three towns split the savings on the fuel. Uh, if Clay just did what was being done before this, one trail truck would show up and we'd load uh, the different commodities and the truck had to go all over New England and the transportation costs were astronomical. Uh, the other thing is the glass recycled glass that gets crushed and is down in um, uh, Wakefield, that pile is growing. Our machine that grinds us up is a noise maker. They don't make that machine again. And uh, what should we do with glass and clay in Lakes Region are working on that. The other thing is Lakes Region planning. Look what it did for a hazardous household waste. A wonderful success. You know, like I was checking with him later next time I go down there, I know a little bit more. But there's, but there's no campaign to... Okay, I, I, again, I, I just and brought it up. You, you remember when there was uh, interest in doing to single stream, and the presentation was made here, and, and for those communities that have gone to single stream, the costs have gone through the roof. Uh, the, 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 the main practical reason to avoid single stream is you're taking um, no cost effort that we're doing today going into the transportation and dumping your stuff into various places and shipping that someplace else transporting all that paying the freight to take it to somebody's facility someplace else where people are paid to pick out the various items uh, and uh, that's all costs that the that the town has to bear as part of the whole uh, disposal. Uh, all right. So, 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 all yeah. Thank yeah. you. All right. <clears throat> Anything else? Okay. Uh, we need to go into non-public <coughs> for these are conducting performance review. This is per RSA 91A3 Roman 2 uh, parent A. Uh, move that we go into non-public. I'll second. Would yes. Margaret, yes. I'll be yes. 